we know damn well you don't have Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer up there flying, but we got plenty of Charlie Sheens. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's, that's still the best 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 military. That's oh, that's wow, that's awesome. Wait, wait, is, is yeah. that a, is that Charlie Sheen right there? Yeah, man. He's wait, you got to actually I had another question, but what's the story behind that, man? What's the story of meeting Charlie Sheen? Was that like Tiger Blood era Charlie Sheen or what was when was this? Knocking all your shit off your day. <laughs> I, know, I had to get this That's down cool he's showing us. That's a very sharp uh, tomahawk. A few moments later. Did you cut yourself Did you the cut tomahawk? yourself off the tomahawk? That's man? my tomahawk, dude, yeah. <laughs> but you're you're uh, wiping your head. Did you cut yourself? Yeah. Well, I was Holy that's, shit, was, that's, that's So I was knocking shit down. I only had one hand. I was Because when you said that's a sharp tomahawk, I didn't know that you actually cut hey, yourself. Hey, we got yeah. we got Hey, there there's our thumbnail right there. Robin will cut cuts himself <laughs> on Battleline podcast. Well, you know what you Fucking can do tuning. too is be, because uh that's the tomahawk that that like the intercept wants to prove we committed war crimes, uh, like scalping people. And it's like, dude, I didn't carry the tomahawk on target. It's 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 heavy and it's a waste. I don't need to. It's just really cool to cut yourself on with it. <laughs> While you're showing us the Charlie Sheen but thing. Battle Line Podcast. Uh, this is a very special episode. We have Rob O'Neill with a uh, on with us, the operator, yeah, and a lot of people who saw what is currently our number one video speaking about him. Uh, I think we're under the impression that the guy hates us and you'll see if he does. I, so. I, I, I just, I, I don't think so. I, I, any, if, if you've been in the community long enough, tough love is where it's at. We don't, we don't curtsy around. Shit. We talk about it. We get it out in the open. And I guess being a public, and we even said it on our show, being a public figure, your name, our names are out there. It's, it's comes with the territory. I know he's going to feel the same way. I, I, I know yeah. it is. And, you, you, you get the praise and you're also going to get the backlash. If, if and if all that can, I could do, I feel like as a host is to be accurate about it and to not and put uh, bullshit out there. And so. if for those of y'all fuckers out there that just saw that, if you haven't listened to our whole thing, listen to it. Cause it was tough. Look. It is positive. It wasn't just or hammer. No, Rob is a friend. Rob is. And I said it during there, during our, that interview, our, our, our click, our little segment, our yeah. little side is that Rob needs to unfuck himself. But he is still one of the best operators out there. He's the top tier as far as those public figures. I said Chris Kyle could be right up there too, but Chris has passed away. God, you know, God rest his soul. But he needs to hold himself to a higher standard. But if it came down to it and we needed to enter the gates of hell and we need to clear it to go kill that devil, I'm going to be right with him in that stat going in with him because he is that type of guy. He's a fantastic individual. He just needs to unfuck himself. That's 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 it. And I would expect the same thing be said to me, which was said to me by a ranger buddy when I was drinking all the time, when I was sleeping around all the time, divorced from my wife, when I was doing drugs, when I wanted to put a gun to my head. What got me out of it was like, Tano, you know what? You need to unfuck yourself. There you go. That's how we deal with things. And and I, I think he's going to feel that I, I don't think we're going to have any any issues with him at all because Rob is a stand up guy and. He was SEAL Team Six. He he knows how to play the game. He knows how to play right. He knows how to. T he knows what tough love is. And and I said at the end of the day, obviously I hold to respect him, and he is a friend. So and, yeah. and if he does, if it goes the other way, well then him and I will fight later. We'll <laughs> get, get, come to Kansas. I'll go to New York, and we'll we'll duke it out behind the scenes. But I seriously doubt that's going to happen. And I would expect Rob to do the same thing if I was having issues and it got out in the open and in public, I, I would expect Rob to even on his podcast say, and bring me on and say, Tano, you need to fix your shit. Cause that's how we do things. That's how we roll. Yeah. So you guys could obviously see and hear that Chris is back. Cause I know that's been quite a few weeks. So we had a hiatus just because of the fact that you were uh, speaking, doing a lot of speaking engagement. Speaking, so yeah. but we're, we're glad to be back here before we get into this episode with Rob O'Neill Guys, if you're looking to stock up on CBD, Relief Bomb, and you're hearing this the day that it comes out, this is the time to do this. And I and I tell you this because we are celebrating Ned's birthday sale, their biggest sale of the year. Ned's birthday sale will run from March 19th to March 28th, so get on it right now. 30% off everything, including already wow. discounted bundles and subscriptions, free shipping on orders over $50, free Rock and Rose Lip Balm for orders over $100, Free Lavender Berry Mellow 10-pack with orders over $150. Shop the sale. Gift with purchases while supplies last. Sale ends March 28th, 2024. Restrictions apply. Wow. This is the best CBD. It's yeah. uh, right here in the U.S. HelloNed.com slash BattleLine or use the code BattleLine at checkout. Once again, you're not going to find U.S.-made CBD uh, and you're not going to find it for a great discount like this anywhere else. Yeah. So HelloNed.com. Wow. 
dot com slash battle line or use the code battle line at checkout also this episode is brought to you by our friends at thadia bold fearless valiant these are the descriptors embraced by thadia the apparel brand that celebrates everyday individuals athletes and those who safeguard us thadia was born with a singular mission to ignite a spirit of courage and bravery in everyone through cutting edge garments thadia delivers the functionality you demand from your apparel while representing the courage and bravery within each of us and you're right, wearing right thadia there right now. there's yeah. one on the wall the courage and brave that was the original courage and bravery t-shirt but then also yeah Thaddea, and you got to check out the guns man come on show the <laughs> guns and that that guys this this is it's the best workout gear I own. It's tremendous, fantastic stuff. It's at Tennessee. They're they're in Tennessee. I I just highly recommend all their stuff they make. If you're gonna wear it just for leisure, though, go up a size. If it's for working out because it's cut to workouts, more of a slim fit, get the size that you want to get the size you normally wear. But if you're wearing it because it's good enough just to wear around town, just to wear leisurely, go up a size because it's 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 gonna be form fitting if you get the size that you would actually wear to the gym. So that's what I always recommend to people, but it is tremendous and, and we are patriotic and that's, that's what that is. They're wonderful, wonderful company. I've been with for almost six years now and it's it, top notch. Scott talent over there is top notch, great company, great products. Absolutely. So explore the complete range of Thadia products and the Thadia KTP apparel line at Thadia.com. That's T-H-A-D-D-E-A.com. Receive a 15% discount on your order with the promo code Thadia KTP. That's one word. T-H-A-D-D-E-A-K-T-P. Thadia KTP. One word. Thadia.com. Use the promo code Thadia KTP. Experience Thadia today by wearing the inspirational apparel brand of the courageous and brave. You are Thadia. Go there right now, Thadia.com. Use the promo code Thadia KTP. With that, let's get right over to Rob O'Neill. From Kansas City to New York City, from planet Earth to extraterrestrial life in space, a podcast with no equal, engaged in unconventional warfare through your speakers and headphones. This is a show about embracing the suck, conquering your demons, and finding God in the face of adversity. Chris Tonto Peranto. Switch is on. Mother I'm going to shoot you in the face. Ian Scotto. You know, Ian and I have been dating for a long time. You are now tuned into the Battle Line Podcast. The Switch is on, Battle Line Podcast. On with us is a guy who truly needs no introduction, Rob O'Neill, Navy yeah. SEAL, Dev Grew veteran, UBL shooter, yeah. author of The Operator, now the host of The Operator Podcast, and, coming and he from take, his and, studio. And he shits his pants when he's doing and, podcasts and, and nobody the has point any we, idea. The point... The yeah. point that Tons and I made before this is, is that I might be shitting right now. <laughs> and you don't know. I mean, that's one of that us. Is... No, we had we drew straws. One of us is. We're just not going to tell you who. It that's is. how covert we are. We are fucking covert. This is without question the best uh, start off point for a podcast I've ever any interview. Actually, this is the best one. <laughs> well, are you talking? Are you talking? Brian Kilme doesn't come out with the shit jokes right off the bat. <laughs> <Go> ahead, <laughs> So, well, with with the actual introduction, I will say, um, actually, first and foremost, congratulations on your new baby. I mean, that's thank great you. news. Wow, dude, thank I didn't you. know that. Yeah, I, I told just, you. I told you. you we did? just had we yes. just had a had a um, had a girl about three and a half weeks oh. ago. So it's awesome. Um, yeah. yeah, Mama's doing great. She she's not sleeping as much as she swore she would, but it's it's awesome. I mean, fatherhood's great. It's I love it. Yeah, that I have the same thing. I I I. Man, I can't believe I missed so much over because I got a 19 year old, a 15 year old, and now I have an eight year old that I had when I finished contracting that right. I've got to spend. Man, that 19 year old, I, I look back like, man, I missed so much. Now going to soccer games and coaching, I mean, it's 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 awesome. I'm like, man, why did I why why that's, did I wait yeah. so long? That's what it's all about. I had I had my uh, obviously you know combat and training and being away from 
yeah. the the house for minimum of 300 days a year and and making navy pay or army pay which turns out isn't very much and it's like i couldn't afford it i was too dumb to know how I'm, i love my kids obviously but now i'm at a place where i can really enjoy yeah. it and it's, yeah. it's awesome i mean it's and i think that i mean i know a lot of people say that have have kids early and get a you know buy a house you can't afford i i think you know w- enjoy your life and wait a little bit and then when you're you know old yeah. like us and you don't feel like going out to the pubs and you can just stay home with your kids stay, like you I mean, said. That, that's what i do i, I don't want to go drinking me and mom are like let's go out tonight no nah, i think i'm gonna throw some steaks on the grill let's just yeah, see, let's that's, hang out. That's, that's bliss that's like the, <laughs> that's my american dream it, it, although you you were tell, tell, telling me before we even started i mean you're still in new york city which is like it's not prime for where you want to be to like go out and just do things with your kids just at home. Right. I mean, it's it, even yeah, if you have a nice I mean, apartment, it's still small. It, well, yeah, it's small. And, and um, I mean, what's fun about, I, I've lived in New York a while. I did, I did a hiatus out to Tennessee for a, a while. We lived there during COVID came back here. And I used to say like, I'm not afraid of New York city because, you know, I've been to Fallujah, but now it's like they're on par with each other, basically. <laughs> so it's any one of my you want to watch your six sometimes it's going so out true. There. And at least yeah. we could at least we could carry in Fallujah. Can't fucking well, no, I'm, not, no. I'm not saying you can't carry in, I'm just I'm I'm not saying you are or you're not, but at least we could legally carry in Fallujah. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. fucked up? Yeah, we can legally carry in Fallujah, but can't legally carry in New York City. You how fucked up is that? You can't protect yourself. And I mean, too, with the defund the police and how much yeah. uh, how many police officers are leaving in New York, especially, and then like yeah. in, recently in Pittsburgh. There's a there's a time I, I forget the time it's like three to seven a.m. where there are no cops and they have uh, call boxes like and I don't know if that's like for assault wow. press one if you've been murdered hang up I, I really don't know what what they're doing but uh, <laughs> I, I mean that's that's the whole mentality of stupid people defund the police okay but you, you the smart people see what's going to happen it uh, doesn't take uh, you know and again in in I mean I hate to defend um, criminals but like. If I'm a criminal, it's it's game on for a it's few open years. Season. Yeah. Yeah. It's open season, yeah. Yeah, I mean, season. I can get look how much free shit. I, I don't want to hurt anybody, but look at all these free TVs. Well, yeah, they've even said here in New York, like for example, some of these crime gangs, like of illegal immigrants, they live out of Florida, and then they do the crime that's in New York City, right. yeah. And then they go back to Florida, and even on yeah. CNN, they had like a legal analyst talking about this, and they go, "Well, why do they uh, go back to Florida to, and not live there and do the crime there?" And it's like, "Because in Florida, you're going to go to yeah. jail." In New York, they don't put you gonna in jail. Because DeSantis ain't going to fuck around. DeSantis no, is going to sit and, and that's where yeah. they're up in um, up in um, Times Square. A couple of years ago, they had recruiters from Florida police departments, like saying, "Hey." Well, yes, yeah, uh, better, that. better cost of living, better pay. We'll give you a car. Uh, come to Florida. And that's and look, I mean, Florida's great. I mean, they get made fun of because occasionally you have the weird dude that got caught fucking a monkey or something. But like F- Florida's great. I, I think it's all. And DeSantis I, is fantastic. I love it. It also depends on where in Florida. Like I love South Florida. I love the whole Delray Beach, Boynton Beach area. That's where I've wanted to move and ended up not. Um, you know, before we get into other stuff, I, I do kind of want to address sort of the elephant in the room of this podcast. And sure. I don't even know what's on your radar. Like for us, this was big on our radar. When what happened with your incident in Texas, we spoke yeah. about it on the podcast. Mm-hmm. We made a video about it. Truthfully, I we had the thumbnail with your mug shot on it. And I was like, hey. people are going to click on this. And and I, I knew that oh, Sh- yeah. shamelessly. I know, hey, I know people want to hear that stuff. Trust but, me, I know. I know too. Uh, my for some reason, my mug shots plural make na- uh, worldwide headlines. Yeah, yeah. I, and that's and and here's the truth. I know if it was any other Navy SEAL, people don't really give a shit. Because I'm gonna let you on a little. I'll let you in on a little secret. I'm not the first Navy SEAL to get arrested. I mean, <laughs> that's exactly. I heard it. One of my buddies, oh, my, well, it was funny as shit. One of my buddies, Clark, uh, if, if, I hope it's not saying it wrong. If Stato, I'm saying I'm butchering his name. Clark's got a podcast, Good Vibes Podcast. And uh, he was talking on his the other day. And he's like, I don't know where this mystique came that like Navy SEALs are good people. <laughs> it's, just, it's just it's funny the way he put it. I mean, and you know, I think back to younger me, but oh, yeah, I can't. Well, I, 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 if I don't want to uh, cut you off, but I was just going to say, I mean, but yes, you just people did are cut, gonna, but you just did I did cut, cut him off. off. But That's people are going to click on people are going to click on it because they're interested in you. Most of our audience has read your book, The Operator, which is a super fascinating Thank book. You. But Thank the you. thing that I actually did want to cut you off on and just say is that a lot of our listeners in the comments and a lot of your fans truthfully hammered us. And they were like, 
you, how dare you talk about Rob in that way? And no, you, you should, this is a private matter. You shouldn't be putting it out there. And to me, it's like when you sign up to be a public figure, just yeah. the same way if I did a sports yeah. podcast and Aaron Rodgers yeah. got arrested. Oh, I know. I'm yeah. I speak I, about it. So I, I, I have no problem with that too. I, I, I'm, I can't talk about it. It's still ongoing. Um, but you will hear about it eventually. Um, because if you can believe it, a lot of the media they don't they don't care about the truth. They care about being first. Re really, You're, uh, that's a shock. Fucking shock yeah. Right there. And uh, so that yeah, I mean, there, I will tell you this: no charges still have been filed for anything. And that if when we hear it, of course, if there, we all, that's the thing about me and 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 if, if we're fucked up, we've hey dude, we fucked up. All right, this is <laughs> the, but my thing is is I get it. I I get it. And I and I've spoken in that Omni twice. It's a nice fucking place, man. That's a nice little 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 dig. They right got a there. they got a great facility there. That's like the, the, the do. Dallas Cowboys play there. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean yeah. and their practice fields there. And I guess they fill the practice field when they're uh, doing their doing their workouts I think start pretty soon too. Jeremy uh, but yeah so I mean I, once that once the story comes out you will know and then I'll come back on. Well, it, it can be stressful. And I wanted to point that out with we, we, the blur, but if people listen to the whole thing, it's stressful speaking all the fucking time. I stopped. I've stopped. I've cut it way down because it can get speaking 60, 70 times. You're telling this to remembering. Then you remember other things from the years prior. Yeah. It fucks with your head. And and I went down that path where I was all the vices. I was I threw them all where I tried to kill myself in 2017. And it was like when I tried to hurt somebody else, then try to, but anyway, but just, all that can get you and, and that's one that i wanted to hit like hey rob's rob's a fit rob is the top public figure i mean hey we got may maybe chris is there kyle because but chris has passed so rob's there marcus then the rest was marcus me you know maybe kennedy i said so man when, when this happened i said i get it but rob's got to understand and i'm being hard sergeant to you i'm like fucking big stars got to fucking understand that he's he's the guy that's out there on top of everybody so when he fucks <laughs> up it trickles down to the rest of us and and I wanted to give you that respect because you are, you are the I guy that people that. look you. at it, but also I'm not, I'm going to be like your teammates. Like, dude, Hey man, unfuck yourself. Let's, let's get this shit. Oh no. I, it I, and I mean, and all I'm saying too, I, I, you know, big boy rules, like you're saying, I'm not, I'm not making any excuses for it. I'm just saying not everything that they reported. Happened. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Uh, again, again, we're still, we're still working it, but that's it. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, it, it people wouldn't think that uh, the speaking circuit can be as busy as it is. And it, yeah. I mean, it sounds like, oh, poor me. I have to ride in a private car and then fly first <laughs> class and ride in a car. But if you do it every single it. night, it, it does yeah. wear on you. And oh, yeah. and and then the same the same story, Tonto, is is if you keep telling the same story, I think it doesn't heal. And when we're all yeah. a little crazy for some of the shit we did, I mean yeah. Yeah. I know you are. Uh, so I'll <laughs> I'll just I'll just jump in that boat with you. <laughs> Not that I'm shitting my pants right now while we're doing yeah, this. Yeah. See, you we don't still, guess well, me. We still, maybe we still I don't know. Maybe. But, That's funny. but he he's right. You're you're spot on. And I don't think people people can get that. And you're the same. I, I agree. Hey man, you feel bad. Don't feel bad for me. But fuck, it's like that scab that you're always ripping. It's, it's yeah. never healing. And that's why I, you know, and that's with fatherhood that was made me want to like, okay, I'm not doing, I'm doing 10, maybe 10 a year, maybe, maybe. and I'm done. And that's yeah. it. But, uh, but bro, yeah, I, I did. I, I, you are, and I'll say it to your face, even though you're a seal and it kind of hurts my ego because a ranger is saying this to a seal and they're, I'm going to get shit from it from the battalion boys from the battle. Probably. <laughs> but dude, you are. So it's like, man, Rob, we got to be here. Rob's got to be up here because if something happens, they're going to hammer. And But he's the forefront. He's the one that they're going to hammer. And then it trickles down to the rest of yeah. us that, that are. So well, I, and I, it, I, I, I want you to be 100% and then some all the time. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and that's a process too. I've, I've done the, uh, the, the psychedelic treatment in Mexico for, for addiction and for PTSD, yeah. which and I, I did Ibogaine and uh, DMT after the Frisco thing. And it's, it, it is a life changer, man. Did it I work? Yeah. How, did it work? Yeah. I mean, it works. I haven't met anyone who's done a lot of veterans and then a lot of, uh, a lot of alcoholics, a lot of drug addicts do it and it can heal you overnight. It's amazing. I mean, and it, it wears off. Uh, so I like, I, I, I did Ibogaine once and I, I'm on top of the world for like four months. And now it's like, yeah. I probably need to go back and that's, that's fine. Cause the psychedelics really work. They just, I don't think our government wants to make it, yeah. uh, approve it to be legal because there is no money in a cure. There's money yeah. in the treatment and in fear. And yeah. if, if this cures people, that's, that's takes, yeah. you know, the pharmaceuticals that are making veterans pop pills, they lose a shit ton of money. Yeah. I agree. yeah I've, yeah, I've watched a lot of, uh, interesting stuff about Ibogaine and I know it's super powerful and, and I do agree. I mean, I'm for anything that's going to help veterans out there fix their life or just people in general. Um, but after this, the incident happened and everything, I did listen to your episode of the operator podcast. And I think 
you said a lot of the same things that we did. Like, I thought it was a very honest podcast. And you you quoted Tucker Carlson, but I never heard it from him. So I heard it from you where you said, yeah. like, being humbled sometimes, like, yeah. is oh. a good thing. And <laughs> I you said were saying that I, how I, I, public humiliation is yeah. a very good thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and the other thing I remember you said is, and you said it was from him, though, is like yeah. no man could reach a certain level of notoriety without at some level thinking they're like Jesus Christ. Yeah. And at some yeah. point you need to like humble yourself. And and I thought it was just an extremely honest mm -hmm. podcast. And I, I I agreed with a lot of what you said on there. Well, cool. Yeah. Well, something else, too, with the speaking circuit is uh, the way it works a lot is you're speaking at events that take place at night after a cocktail hour with the client. And then in my case, the client, you know, people are, Hey, let me get a drink for you a drink here. And, and uh, the thing with booze, man, you, you hit the well too often, you're going to fuck up. Yeah. And, uh, and again, I'm not, I'm not making any excuse. I'm owning it. It's just uh, the, the, the environment's there. And, you know, I've, I've been speaking since 2012 and it's just, yeah. it's, it, it was, it's, it's good. I mean, I still dig it. I, I like, I love meeting with people. I love speaking because it's uh, I, you know, I don't, get into a shit ton of details i just i like to to kind of tell jokes uh i'm not a good stand-up comedian but some of the shit i say is pretty funny because i probably stole it from somebody else <laughs> that's the best that's how the best fuck what joe rogan said every every comedian has stolen other people's kind oh, what, sure. what did he have that carl smentia joe rogan and carlos smentia had that big yeah, fight like that. oh you stole it's like dude you guys steal each other's jokes since richard Pryor back so don't yeah, even yeah. I was like what yeah but it's a it's the same thing with speaking now i've I listen to you. I listen to to uh, Kenny Thomas is a great speaker from yeah. Matt Eversman. And don't think for one next second. Like, Matt Eversman is exceptional. He's a wonderful he's a, speaker. He, he's a great speaker. Kirk yeah. is Lippo. And I, I'm like, man, I like that. I think I'm going to take it. I'm going to use that. And I'm just going to twit. But you know what? As long as it works and it helps somebody and we're not completely. Seriously. We're just well, you can get and you can get the message across to people about because a lot of people want to hear about mission success and team building and teamwork. Yeah. And you can, I mean, you don't even need combat stories for that because I think training is more interesting yep. than combat because like, I know like my experience in both Iraq and Afghanistan, I was wondering like, did we miss something? Am I in a different place? Because this isn't what I'm seeing on television. Like, are, I don't know if we're really that good or they're just really bad, but you know, I don't, I mean, and you know, most missions, you know, 95% of them were yeah. dry holes anyway. It's like, They're you're just, not, or, or you just, you know, they hid their guns well enough and you got nothing on them. It's like, it's not, it's not a me personally. I mean, I can't speak for the, uh, the brave soldiers and Marines and airmen that were driving around, you know, in Ramadi, just wondering when the IED is going to go off. That, that wasn't yeah. me or us. Um, and that's, you know, I can't imagine driving somewhere knowing that this could be it. This could be it. This could be it. That's got to wear on your psyche. I mean, we'd see those guys when I was at Fob Shank after, uh, I read in 2011, um, you know, you're in the chow hall and you got part of the army that's there and they got really clean uniforms. And then the damn, the infantry comes in from however many days driving around just with that look on their face. Like you guys, I mean, I'm here to tell you, there are so many people that had a harder job than I did. Uh, and that's the testament though, for what you sign up. You, hey, you went all the way. And that's why I tell guys, if you're going to go in, go seals, go Rangers. Go, Cause oh, yeah. if you're going to go, go to, go to PJs, go to combat controllers, go join task. Right? Because mm -hmm. if you don't, you're going to get, you don't think you're going to go, you're going to go in a combat, but you're going to be doing just what you said, instead of going with operators that when it's time to go in, there's, yeah, no, there's yeah. no ifs it's, we're going in to, to take mm -hmm. somebody out and that's it. There's no, there's no gray area. The gray area is no. gray if it's on the floor. If, uh, Dakota, uh, Dakota Meyer, I wrote a book with him called the way forward. We yeah. wrote that. Uh, and, uh, I, his story is like the typical Marine Corps recruiting story where he he, he walked in there with these yellow dreadlocks <laughs> and he had no idea what he, he was a male cheerleader in high school. And uh, the, the, the recruiter, oh yeah, the recruiter pulling a, a typical recruiting thing. He's like, well, I have this elite uh, division. I only got a few <laughs> slots left. It's, it's called not, infantry. And, this uh, elite. <laughs> and, and he even said, and you can keep your dreadlocks when you get to Paris Island. You're fine you're like dude, that's bullshit is are you yeah, serious oh. and he, yeah and he i have a picture of him i can get it to you guys and you can post it. it's <laughs> and no he, it's incredible throw it up. that would be great yeah we, I, I, we'll I'll get it to you. we gotta I, get we, we make gotta, sure you tag him we gotta get him on bro uh, he's a good oh dude. he's a, I, he's, Dakota, a Dakota's great he's guy. a wonderful interview and he don't he's a 
big who do you if you don't have never seen if you've seen Dakota in pictures and he if, after he get done he's done on the ground grappling he looks pretty big but if he's just normally dressed he doesn't look like a big dude but he's a thick he's, motherfucker. He's, he's, he's bigger than he looks and he's hardcore yeah. like he, right, yeah. i think he's training for that uh iron yeah. man right now and i think that's because he's kind of got the attitude well why wouldn't i it's like i don't know because i'm not doing it with you i mean i i could come as a support and hold water i'm i, I don't really i don't i like to swim i <laughs> yeah, you, you know you don't you know how to suck you don't need to go practice it anymore you've done enough yeah, well that's it. yeah it's like a thing too I, you know I, when i first got out of the navy too but someone's like hey man we can go out we can go camping and stuff i'm like dude I, i've been camping i don't i've been hunting people i don't need to go camping now i mean that, but now i'm getting more into the uh like the love and nature type stuff and the environmental type stuff where that's really relaxing if you can ever hear like fly fishing in a river in montana or beautiful di diving with sharks in bimini and i've been believe it or not diving with tiger sharks without a cage is, is actually relaxing the hardest part because when you get in in bimini there's a now fuck a bull shark i'll just put that on the record <laughs> but uh tigers and great hammerheads and reefs and and lemons the scariest part is like jumping out of a plane it's from this seat to that water once you get in you're just in and it's like amazing and wow. uh, and they and and they're to the point there. These tigers, they they like to, um, they play with you. It's weird. You've probably seen it on the internet. Yeah, and it's still sketch when you're touching them. <laughs> but uh, it's it's relaxing. The ocean is beautiful. And uh, my only problem with bimini is all the sand fleas. I have the sweet meat. They love to eat me. <laughs> were, were you a big swimmer before joining the seals? No, I didn't know how. I oh wow. No, we we it was in Montana. I didn't know how to swim. And again, I talked to a clever recruiter. Because I said I want to be a sniper, and he said we have snipers in the Navy. We'll send you there after you go to SEAL train. No big deal. He like brush. He didn't give a fuck. <laughs> and uh, I went there, and um, I, I was just for I joined the delayed entry program, so I had a few months yeah. to go yeah. to the college. I still had an ID for. Well, I mean, I, I got to the thing, and I seriously, I mean, I could I could keep myself alive, but I got in the pool at the college, and I said at Montana Tech, and I said I, I'm standing in there like okay, it's 25 meters down, 25 back. I'll swim a thousand meters and gauge it from there. So everything was going plan to my plan until I actually entered the water. And that's when the problems immediately started. <laughs> and I'm trying to do this. And, and my buddy, Mike Driscoll, who was going to swim at Notre Dame said, uh, he was there and he said, don't take this the wrong way. I, I, it's great to see you, but I've literally never seen you in the pool before. What gives? And I said, oh, I joined the Navy today. I'm going to be a SEAL. He's like, no, you're not like that. So get back in the water. I got to show you a few <laughs> things. And I was able to work on it before I went there. But then in Navy boot camp, like, you don't, you, we swam a few times and that was just for the SEAL qualification test. So it's, you know, but fortunately, if you, when you get out there and if you get through the pool drills, buds, uh, basic underwater demolition SEAL tree, most of the swimming is done with fins in the ocean. And if you can get a little bit of the side stroke down, you're, you can pass. Uh, it's all technique. Like you can, I think you can run forever and that's just guts, but swimming is a lot of technique. Some of the roly poly fat dudes are b amazing swimmers. And we yeah. had like co college po uh, water polo players there and, and, and college did, swimmers. Uh, did, and I went through pre-scuba and water filtration and even I, I hated it. I was like, why the fuck are we doing this? The seals or the recon guys are going to get this mission, but we got to, okay, let's go. And we had two water polo guys hated those sons of bitches. They could just forever. Just it even, <laughs> This shit they could do, like they the, the with uh, their tread legs. water with tread water with the twin eighties with your hands out. And they don't they don't even need it. They're doing that weird, doing that weird bicycle thing. swim. <laughs> Badass dudes, man. They, they, Come they, to think of it, I should remember that though, because you do talk about that in the operator. It's just been a lot of years since I've read it, but I do love hearing about you training <laughs> while listening to Guns N' Roses. Like yeah, I, I love yeah. all those stories. Use your illusion one and two. Yeah. And my yes. that, that that was another thing too. I had my stepdad build a pull-up <laughs> bar in my basement. Because again, with pull-ups, I was like, well, I'll just start with 10 and see how it goes. It's like, and one. Fuck. <laughs> These are legit too. I gotta figure this out. I'm leaving for the, I'm leaving for Great Lakes soon. <laughs> how it tell basic, you know, basics changed a lot. Army has changed a ton. They don't do the shark attack anymore. It that you don't hear many stories about the Navy boot camp up at Great Lakes. It, can do you know much about now compared to then? I mean, was it of course, I'm going to say it was easy back because that, that's what we think. That's our army, yeah, army guys. It was easy, but last hard class. It always is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. What what's it changed? Because you, you're you're into you know you're more into that, and and it gets into the political realm too with how easy oh, yeah. the military's getting. And I agree with it. I think it is. I think it was easier back in World War II than it was. I, I mean, it was harder yeah, it was for harder us than. I, shit, here we go. Harder for yeah, them. the opposite. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. Scratch that. Than it was for us. They had it way harder. And Vietnam guys way harder. It always gets easier, but it's getting to a point, in my opinion, where now it's kind of getting, they're not getting the trade. They're not getting the, 
the individualism kicked the shit out of them there. It's, I, but I don't know what's your opinion on that, man. Yeah. I mean, you got to figure it well, let's look at the world war two guys. You, you win the war in, uh, in Europe and then you win the one in <laughs> Japan and then your ass is back home and you better be at the factory on Monday. Yeah. And yeah, imagine it, they didn't even call it post-traumatic stress. They called it shell shock. Shell shock. Yeah. And, and it's like, don't bring up mental illness because you're a pussy. And then Korea was so bad. They don't oh, even yeah. talk about it. And yeah. then you got the Vietnam guys. And I don't know if you've ever been in a jungle, but like that's the scariest environment imaginable. I couldn't imagine fighting there. But then those dudes and and fighting the, the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese, with, I mean, just everything I've heard is just hell. And then they come back here and get spit on by the American people. So that we we're we're lucky that the Vietnam vets are there because we get treated better because they got treated like shit. Yeah. And America's got a little bit of guilt. Uh, I do think that boot camp is getting easier. Uh, better gear, like we went through with the dungarees, the kick-ass jeans, and the stupid blue uh, shirts, and we look like I don't know. But uh, yeah, I, I mean they're they're wearing camis. Oh, that cracks me up too because the Navy has blue camis, right? And it's like if you fall off a Navy ship, the last thing you want to look like is the fucking water. Like let's, <laughs> you should have orange non-cami that expands like floaties. Like they're not finding you out there, especially in your blue camis. But that little like things like that, and it sounds like the gear's a little better. But the Navy, the boot camp was never that hard. It was, uh, you know, obviously waking up early, which they do. And then, it's, I mean, in the Navy, they're training you to be on a ship or a sub. And you got to learn how to have all of your gear in AC bag that fits under your rack on the ship. And so a lot of time spending, you know, I mean, I, I'm happy I learned how to fold. A lot of time doing that, um, it, which isn't hard. The hardest part is not falling asleep in the classroom because, you know, you wake up at 2.30 in the morning. But, I mean, I, you know, I think there's good people still coming in. It's just all I've heard is that the – upper leadership is starting to suck everywhere really bad because they're, they're playing the political games. You got to say a certain thing or else you're not getting, it's like everything else. You're not going to get promoted if you don't tow the party line. And and a lot of senior officers enlisted realize that. So they got to play the stupid game, which is really bad for retention. I mean, you know, we still got to, our military still can kick ass. It's just, yeah. it's just a matter of, um, I, I, it's a matter of weak leadership at the, at the top. Well, uh, and it's lucky for us. I still, our special operations community is still the best in the world, in my opinion. As my, I, yeah. I think, and, and I think that's why we can still, we and and our aviation. I mean, fuck, come on, man. Navy, yeah. our aviation, our fighter. But pilots, I mean, but I mean, the issue here is, uh, is, uh, you know, we got great aircraft carriers, but we've lost, I don't know how many war games against China uh, consecutively. It's yeah. a lot. We can't win those. And I mean, here's a tough one to swallow right now. NATO's going to lose to Russia because whatever the hell they're money laundering over there, yeah. Ukraine is not going to beat Russia. They can basically decide, um, do we just give them the land they have or do we keep letting them destroy the entire country? Either way, it looks like NATO's incompetent. And, you know, NATO was formed to fight Russia, but uh, NATO, Ukraine is not NATO. So this is yeah. not our fight. And yeah. we, yeah, you've, Although they're I mean, trying, they're trying to bring Ukraine into NATO. Well, that was a whole, a lot of the whole reason it was starting. And exactly, uh, seriously, yes. Ukraine's not. I, I was in Ukraine training with uh, the Spetsnaz, uh, in a, right around 1998, 99, and you know there's some hardcore dudes, but but working over there, with, with, working with the cor corrupt government is awesome. I'm here to tell you, there's some cool shit you can do, especially on Liberty. Um, <laughs> But uh, and and like the you know the, their their ranges aren't as strict as ours, you know they'll let a guy like me drive a tank, so that's kind of cool. But I could have told I mean I could have told you years ago the most corrupt government over there is Ukraine and it's I've not been, our, our I've problem. been saying that and you said money laundering I said that the first thing no doubt about that's it. what we're doing money laundering people no no right no dude Ukraine money laundering they built that's one of the best at least back in the day it was one of the best places for terrorists to build IEDs and ship them that was IED central they got sex trafficking I mean this is not a good so no thank you thank you for saying that because it validated shit I've been saying for fucking a year it's now. It, the, the it's the sad truth but nobody wants to admit it especially because yeah. you know the media is in bed with the Democrats and if the yeah. Democrats love war something shade is going on with money yeah and uh so they're gonna they're, you know they say to uh, uphold democracy in Ukraine. Again, it's not our problem. And they're like, well, they'll go into Poland next. No, they won't. No, they because won't. Poland is a NATO country. And if NATO fights with the Russians, then they'll kick their ass. But right now, this bullshit we're doing and all the money we're just blowing, um, especially considering how many people are homeless in this country, how many veterans are home, homeless in this country. We could we could build a border wall for a fraction of the money that, I mean, they're even trying to throw in a, a, a board. This is how corrupt they are. They're, they got a border wall package, but it's like... Uh, $5 goes to Ukraine, $2 
goes to Israel and the border gets one dollar. And then then you don't want to sign that because there's way too much money. And they're like, well, you don't want to defend the border. It's yeah. like, no, you fucking asshole. Stop putting everything else in. This is for our border. But we could just have a clean bill one time, just a clean straight up. This is what we're But they've always got all that extra. Ch- it, it's politics and it's horseshit yeah, yeah. again. No, and, and every, the good news is because of Elon Musk and X, uh, now people are actually starting to see a lot of the corruption that happens. Yeah. And that's because we're, I mean, in the dark in 2020 and even, even now, okay. Saying, uh, there's no evidence of of election uh, election fraud. It's like it's everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I you, I can't. Me personally, okay, I, okay, no, I don't have the proof in front of me. I can't look at some shit that happened and say, you okay? It looks like it's free and fair. No, it's not. As soon as we as soon as we left, just doing write in, hand in write in ballots, and I'm not right, but voting ballots, paper ballots. Thank you. Like man, but I, I the Republicans okay that that was I was like man that's your that's your it's the it's the start of the you're gonna start losing because we don't have hard copies of ballots we can't just if you're gonna start doing all this crazy mail in ballots or we can do computer ballot all we can't control it paper ballots if an algorithm if an algorithm can come in and mail in ballots with no names can go to certain spots in big cities you, there's no way you're gonna win never uh, and it's and and you I mean you got to give Democrats credit they're. Uh, very organized they're just the republicans are a bunch of pussies (laughs) hey guys hope you're enjoying this interview with rob o'neill it really was an honor to have him on a long time coming and i'm glad he decided to join us and we had a great conversation before we continue fort scott munitions is a manufacturer of multi-federal patented solid copper and brass cnc spun ammunition It's designed to tumble upon impact and soft tissue, leaving devastating wound channels for faster bleed out and quicker incapacitation. This ammunition was originally developed to innovate and improve on the standard of military grade ammunition design. It was found that not only did the TUI ammunition outperform competitors in the self-defense industry, but it quickly became apparent that it would be a top contender for hunters alike. With the ammunition being CNC spun, the tolerances are some of the tightest on the market, ensuring that it receive the same results with each pull of the trigger. It's available everywhere, all your favorite local gun stores, but you'll get the best deal through us. When you go to FSM.com, you use the promo code BATTLELINE, you'll get 15% off your order no matter what you're shooting with. Only available to listeners of the Battleline podcast. Fort Scott Munitions is a proud supporter of Chris Peranto, Battleline Tactical, and the Battleline podcast. Once again, fsm.com, promo code Battleline. Also on with us for this very special episode with Rob O'Neill is our friends at Paymax Tactical. Paymax is a law enforcement owned and operated company based in Florida that proudly manufactures 100% USA made products. Paymax Tactical has several unique products, including their Lion Blank Fire device, used as a safer and reusable cost effective alternative for breaching and training for both civilian and law enforcement applications. The device uses several types of blank cartridges and is used extensively in training environments, including canine training and as a way to induce stress on the range. Now, Chris, whenever you have a course, this is something I know you regularly use. Yeah, it, well, it is cost effective. You, you know, one piece of material, yeah, one housing unit, and then you can get different calibers as well. So you can make the, the boom bigger or you can have the stun more intensified. And that's why it's even beneficial, I think, for law enforcement, not just in training, but even in your real world applications, because you can you can vary that size of that stun or that incapacitation with the different size cartridges they have, which makes it second to none. What And it makes that the only thing out there that you can do that. So, guys, if you are in law enforcement, military or you're an instructor, you go with Paymax, get their stun grenades or get their lion's training device. It's a stun grenade, but it's just a Gucci cool stun grenade. Yeah. But it gives you more options, a lot more options than, than you can with just a regular, regular device. And, and it's tremendous. And they have a bunch of other stuff they're putting out now as far as just lowers and uppers and stuff, the uh, attachments for weapon systems. So they're not just a one-stop shop anymore. You can get a lot of things through, uh, through Paymax and just not the lion's device. Absolutely. I was going to mention that. I mean, it's a lot of stuff we can't talk about on YouTube, quite honestly. Yeah. But yeah, in addition to that, they have <laughs> yeah. produced several products, including their Hades hybrid muzzle device, uh, RIP AR yeah. ambidextrous charging handles, X slick coated bolt carrier groups, pin and weld uppers, and other stuff I can't really talk about. So 
All Paymax Tactical <laughs> product is 100% USA made and backed with a lifetime warranty. You can find out more about the product that they offer by visiting their website at pmtactical.com. Use the coupon code TONTO at checkout for 15% off your order. That's pmtactical.com. Promo code TONTO, T-A-N-T-O. And with that, let's get right back to our interview with Rob O'Neill. You know what I wanted to ask you about, though, in terms of uh, how, like, you could talk about this now on X because X isn't, like, deplatforming people for talking about this stuff. It's weird because when you talk about conspiracy, right, it all gets lumped into one giant umbrella, and there's stuff that has there that there's some information behind them. There's stuff that's completely unfounded. And some of that stuff I'm thinking of actually ties into you. I mean, how do you deal with the stuff over the years that, for one, people say, everyone on the Bin Laden Ray had died except for a Rob O'Neill when they're all alive and well, or then we got, yeah. you know, and, and then Trump, tr oh, yeah, you know, I, I'll hammer him too. truthfully retweeting too. that story that you yeah. guys didn't kill Bin Laden. You killed the body double. Like how do you deal with that type of crap? Because well, that stuff has no evidence behind it. It took me about a second to get a retort when they said Bin Laden was a body double. I just said, well, I killed the guy who was in bed with Bin Laden's wife. So either way he had a coming. <laughs> that, that was just going to happen. And uh, I mean, I mean, it's so crazy. It's so crazy right now. It's like, well, I mean, they they said it was him and he looked just like him and <laughs> and his his kids were there and they confirmed it. And Amal, his wife, confirmed it. And then we got the DNA. We got the pictures. I wish they'd release those damn things. Um, and then we got back and the three letter agencies have uh, yeah. have professional. Do we're eating breakfast sandwich. The army delivered us watching President Obama say, you know, tonight I can report to the American people and to the world the United States conducted an operation oh, to kill Osama bin Laden. We don't, we don't we don't say Obama. That's like saying Voldemort on this show. Dude. Oh, okay, God. <laughs> yeah, but no, that, I mean, with with the um, the conspiracy shit, it's like I can only tell you that like one person saw what happened in that room, and I can tell you what happened. And if if people choose not to believe me, I'm I'm not going to change their mind because th they're off their rocker. It's just yeah. we went in and and like that, you know, you know. I mean, th what upsets me is like they don't even give the pilots credit who flew us in. That that's the most dangerous job, the most demanding job, or the the air crew that's making the bird fly and then making sure the door opens, make sure everything yeah. works. Um, you know, if, if a missile hits us on the way in, which it could have, ninety minutes in, ninety minutes out, their his family's going to miss him as much as they'd miss us yeah. so you're kind of how about the intel people that found bin laden and worked you know seven days a week 20 hours a day for decades or whatever to find this asshole and that's just it's insulting to the, i mean i was smart enough to carry a sledgehammer and i went in the door and went up some stairs and shot a tall guy so my job wasn't that hard it was just a longer <laughs> flight I, I was gonna uh ask you about i don't know if you could even answer this but when you said that the pictures haven't been released and you're like i wish they'd they would be released what I've always read, and once again, I don't know what you could say, is that basically like Bin Laden's corpse was shot up so much that they had to dump it to sea because it would have been looked at as like a war crimes thing. I mean, I shot him up close with uh, 77 grain hollow points. I bet I don't know. I'm pretty sure those are legal, but don't bring that up. <laughs> uh, but no, here's something else, too. Here's something else I was considering with the rounds we carried and potentially stuff that we took off target and brought it home. I think you can do that because that wasn't that wasn't a war mission. We were not at war with Pakistan. We went into Pakistan under a different title yeah. than we fought under Afghanistan. So I think it's not a war thing, but uh, um, but people said it would would have looked gratuitous. That yeah, but, yeah I mean, I, after I got done with him, I split him from the tip of his <laughs> nose. Like I had to hold his head together for the picture that we took. Those so if the, if they do get released, those are my my gloves that I have right behind me. By the way, holy shit, that's um, crazy. Yeah, I mean that's and that's the picture, and they dumped him in. See, and I see, I was against that because um, could, our uh, now not all senior leaders like Admiral Mc, Bill McRaven led the yeah. mission, sold it, and he is just cream of the crop, man. He's everything that looks and sounds like an admiral to is an admiral to just cool as shit to awesome dude. Um, but the powers that be when they when they said yeah we're, we're going to bury him at sea, and I remember asking why, and they said well we don't want a shrine, and I said well that's not Sunni Islam, especially not the Wahhabis like Bin Laden because they get uh, a lot of the um, not all not all Muslims, but a lot of a lot of Muslims get pissed off when you depict draw Muhammad, and yeah. the reason that is and by pissed off you mean like literally but, kill people yeah, but I mean that see that would be that would be worshiping a fall uh, 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 the prophet and not there is one God yeah. it's Allah. And um, if you draw, you're depicting your whatever. So no, they weren't going to put up a shrine because 
that would be uh, their version of blasphemy, I guess. You don't worship that. Plus, I think Pakistan should have kept that house open because that man, that I'd probably go back as a tourist. I should have uh, smart. That would have been. And you're well, they uh, were they, they were they were pretty embarrassed. They, well, tell me if you can. And I've always, I, I wanted to hear. I don't know how much you can say, but the helicopter crash you mentioned, and that always, because that that was to me that was like the the key point right there. When it went down, I mean, the the, the mission could have went to shit, and how you oh, guys held, yeah, and how you guys held it together. I mean, a helicopter crashing, going down right before shit started. Yeah. Can you talk about that and just how you guys held it together? Because I mean, I, that would have as yeah. a, as as a fellow fellow whatever Ranger soldier seal, yeah. as a fellow serviceman, that's what got was like, man, I want to know about that. How did they? What what did they go through? And training kicks in, yes, yada yada yada. But mentally, what were you thinking, man? Well, I got lucky because I didn't know it crashed until I got yep. inside the um, the inside the walls. So you could you uh, couldn't where, where you guys were that far enough behind that you couldn't see it come in or you couldn't see. Well, it we know they were we were both on final. The plan was to okay. fast rope, fast rope dash yeah, yeah. in front of the main house, and then they were gonna we were gonna put some of my guys out like the sniper, interpreter, dog, and then my team was gonna go up to the roof. Okay. Faster up there, jump into the thing, and then we're gonna meet. You yeah, know, you're gonna top squeeze. to bottom. Yeah. Uh, so I we didn't know. We just the, when we uh, well, I mean, but and before that, during plan, like we were we were thinking of contingencies. We thought sure. of you know what if one car, two car, what if they go this way? That's a dead end. All this bullshit. Um, and then one night, one of the bosses said, "All right, what's the worst thing that could happen?" And the youngest guy in the room said, "The helicopter could crash in the front yard." We're like, what the fuck, dude? What? <laughs> yeah, Why just, say that? Why, Why did you bring it's like, it? What? Just don't roll a seven. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, so, <laughs> but, but so we dropped this the, the guys out, the small handful of dudes. We were heading back up, and our pilot saw. The other pilot, he and that the first pilot did he crash landed it because there yeah, was a weird okay. updraft. I, th I think it was hotter than we'd planned, so he's not getting the lift. And he he knew. Got and it. we're lucky we had TF one sixty man. I think we had the best yeah. sixty pilots in the fucking world. I know it. Uh, and he knew if he spun it and he could if he could put the tail on the wall because wow. it's like a twelve yeah. foot high mud wall and pin the nose, he might not kill everybody. He said a less experienced pilot would have powered up, flipped it, everyone's dead. So he did that. Our, we sent our guys out. As we came up, our pilot saw him do that and figured, fuck it, I can't hold the hover, hover either. So he went back down. And basically, he's just telling us, get out. And I remember stepping out of the bird and looking at, I'm looking over the wall at the three-story house. I'm like, fuck it, I guess we start the war from here. But because we knew where everything was, we put a yeah. a charge on the on the northeast corner, seven-foot charge of C6, uh, blasted it. And that's like a master key. It blasted it, but there's a brick wall behind it. So the the breacher said fail breach this is bad and i said no this is good that's a fake door and nobody does that he's in there so then we knew the carport would open because we'd seen him on intel driving in and out so i just announced kind of hey this is so and so and i'm gonna blast the carport and they said no don't blow it we'll open it and <laughs> the door opened and a glove came out with a thumb that i recognized i'm like all right how in the world are they okay doesn't matter and that's one of the points in life too it does <laughs> Like when I when I talk to football teams, especially the offense, I'll say it doesn't matter why it's second and fifteen, guys. It just is. Yeah. What do we do now? Like talking about this shit's not going to help. What do we do now? So they open the door, and I still didn't realize it crashed. And I walk past two pilots and an air crew guy. Right, they're standing there. They're wearing a different uniform, but they have American flags on. I remember walking past, going, "Who the fuck are these guys?" I'm like, "Are these are these ground branch? Are they here?" What? Okay, whatever. Again. I don't know. So we go in the thing in the main house. We're in the first floor and I'm watching dudes work a hallway and I'm like shining IR lights up looking for thermal bear charges. Like someone, he's going to blow himself up. I got to be here. As I'm doing that, a dude next to me goes, uh, helicopter crashed. And I said, oh, what helicopter crashed? He goes, bro, our helicopter crashed, right? I think you walked right past it. I'm like, fuck, I must've been looking this way. Um, and then as we're doing that, the sniper had the dog and, and cheese who wrote a book about Cairo, the dog called no ordinary dog, which is incredible. That dog was amazing. They're running They're going to do two racetracks around the whole compound. Wow. And he got to that point where the tail was and he didn't know they crashed either. And he came over the radio and said, so I'm inside listening to this over the, over comms. And he said, uh, Hey guys inside be on alert because they're ready for us. They have a training mock-up of our super secret <laughs> helicopter in the front yard. And there's a weird pause and the ground force commander goes, no jackass. That's ours. We crashed. 
And the sniper goes, yeah, that makes a lot more sense than the shit I was just saying. Carry on. <laughs> so that's how the helicopter went down. People have no idea how how much Jack the, Ashery goes on. The, it's just the, the, dark, the darkness brings out the humor. It's the so humor awesome is to watch. So funny. Holy shit. I would have dude, I mean, literally, movie. you can hear dudes laughing. We had one when Halo first came out. Um and that voice was because you know everyone plays Halo. Rangers, by the way, are the best Halo players in the fucking world. Wait, uh, did I could not beat Josh Garrison, best Ranger? I did fucking crush Dude, my I, ass all I, the time. I got all destroyed because we'd have the B Huts connected, like yeah, yeah. versus Rangers. No, <laughs> yeah. kicked out every time. Those guys are good. Um, but we we were on a target one time, and our EOD guy, our explosive guy, he got off to like he's this is a different way different target and he's off to one side he's going to hold security on the on this wall and these three terrorists they pop up like they're sleeping outside so he goes bat 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 and he comes over comms and goes gain the lead like dudes are so... tripping they're laughing so hard <laughs> that is and how could you have to be it'd be so quick just to think of that shit yeah too, right that, there. That, <laughs> what's so fast it's got to be a game gained the lead i'm winning <laughs> i think he won that night yeah he got he wins he, he definitely wins that round definitely i think but there's him. something about um like watching a monster with a gun and your buddy's name below it and you know you're about to come behind him and just stroke him <laughs> and you just go when you stab him. <laughs> well then teabag him obviously go to sleep i always <laughs> always got the team and that's and for real too when they were just in the game room passed out not that i ever teabagged <laughs> I Anybody, thought you were saying on target. Yeah. Don't we can't definitely can't talk about that. No. Bunch of Marines got in trouble for peeing on Taliban, which I still don't have a problem with. That's just me. What they I didn't when did that happen? We did oh, we talk about that ago. in oh, many years, in, many years ago? Yeah, yeah. Well, about... I mean the, the issue the issue this is way was long before we ever did a podcast. Who, wait, who, is... did, who didn't pee on the Taliban though? Well, I that's mean, what I'm I, saying. I, I... But there's a difference between peeing on the Taliban and filming yourself peeing on the Taliban. <laughs> that's the <laughs> thing, man. I feel like military have really screwed themselves with some of the stuff that they've recorded, truthfully, oh, yeah. right? I don't mean, record it. It's uh, <laughs> look, well, I mean, people always say, Where's the uh the footage? For the, from the bin laden raid i'm like none of us carried a camera they, yeah. they said why i'm like because i don't need some jackass at the pentagon yeah. monday morning quarter you, you just trust me that the justice was served i'm not going to show it to you yeah i agree i agree it's like body cams on cops man cops are so hamstrung right now well, it's yeah. kind of well said yeah there's certain stuff like i think there's certain positions people have including military where you probably shouldn't be on social media if you're active duty, unless it's just no. you out with your girlfriend or something. N not anything that's like remotely confidential or even controversial. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I got Twitter in the Navy. My buddy said, "Try this Twitter thing because um, it's hilarious. No one knows who you are, and you can just talk mad shit." I'm like, "Cool." <laughs> and he goes, "Just pick a fake, fake, pick a fake name." And I went, uh, "Let's see." Uh, speaking of St. Patty's Day, I'm a Mick, yep. and we say who ya. Mikuya. That's how I got Mikuya is my stupid name. And yep. so I, I had seven followers. The next day I woke up with fifteen thousand because someone <laughs> leaked my name. I'm like, what the fuck? Was that was that from the article? Because for people who don't know, actually, this kind of ties into what I was saying about you know talking about the video with you. Is I always feel like there's a line, but that you don't cross between what you're going to say on a podcast or in public. And yeah, I mean, someone crossed that line for you right when you came out, basically when you made an off color joke about Delta Force. And they that was a wrote terrible it as joke. If, as it, but they wrote it as if you were being completely serious, and and it was, was off the with, record. And it's I like, was you don't do that. Dudes. I was yeah. with dudes in a in a. We were drinking in a hotel room. We're at the Ritz Carlton of Pentagon City. I'm with Rangers. I got a Delta guy there. Another Navy SEAL. And and and, yeah. uh, and some chick was recording it, and then I heard it on CNN. I'm like, I Jesus Christ! <laughs> I, like Delta Force is Delta Force, man. I don't. <laughs> It's a joke. God. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. think it's just these people who work in media who don't even get the branch rivalry and how you guys talk and to have it as a headline that you said something serious. But yeah, wait. So when did your name leak that quickly that, that your Twitter following blew up? Was that the first article you wrote? Or Yeah, I didn't even write an article. That was well, I was doing you were interviewed a, uh... for one right for Esquire. Uh, yes, I did. And, then, and that was another one, too, where they made me look like a whiny bitch because of the cover. <laughs> I, I remember that, get, yes. Where they said, you get, said you didn't have health care or something, right? I was making a point that if you don't retire, you don't get health care, and maybe we should look into that. Like, Because a lot of these guys have been fighting more. You know, I have 17 years, not 20, but can yeah. you give me three months for my kids to have health care before I get a job? I don't even know how to get a job out there. I, I, you yeah. know, I'd rather go to combat than <laughs> fill out a 
an application for work. Uh, yeah, I mean that, but that whole th the whole thing too, and like, I mean, the guys that are involved in the fight, they don't give a shit. And even one guy said, "Man, if I see you, I'm going to knock you out." I'm like, I probably deserve it. That's fine. But I, I wasn't. Look, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Delta Force does not suck. They're fucking incredible. <laughs> like that's not. Yeah. What I literally <clears throat> beers and talking and this off the record. Yeah. So well, that's and, on the record. And the point you were making was actually an important point because the even greater level of that. I I don't know if you had a relationship with Glenn Doherty and Ty Woods, but I mean, in Chris's situation, when Glenn Doherty died they wouldn't pay off his life insurance because he wasn't married. So a yeah. lot of contractors, military guys get screwed over signing mm -hmm. contracts that they, they don't understand and are, are made to not understand. All right. You, you, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm just going to say, I mean, they, cause they know a lot of guys like, like Tonto and me, um, we'll bitch, but we won't complain enough so they can fuck the veterans over. They, well, the, and bitch, bitch is just part of the game. That's what we're, bitch we're is good. Bitch to each other. Nobody yeah. wants a complainer, but yeah, bitching, yeah. I bitch all yeah. the time. I, it's, it's, and we're not, when we see it, can I go to work? Do I, I need to sign this to go to work, right? Okay, sign. And I'm not reading that shit. And we had no. guys that did that did want to take it to like, can I take it to an attorney? No, the CI, the CI. Well, and the I yes, I, I I trusted the Rangers. I did, and I honestly I I thought they did us right with agency. No, they, no, of course no. they did. Of course, the, they did. I I heard a story too. Just because another thing that bothers me too is a lot of veterans want to fuck other veterans over. That makes no sense to me. Uh, but one of my buddies who was at GB, um. He, he, he was a SEAL and he said, why don't we have more SEALs here? And he said, because every time we hand an application from a SEAL to another SEAL, go, oh, this guy sucks. Oh, this guy sucks. It's like, thanks. Because I mean, yeah. but again, but like at SEAL Team 6, that wasn't the case. I'm sure at Ranger Battalion, that's not the case. Like yeah. we're there for each other. But you get, I mean, one of the biggest, not one of the, I make a lot of mistakes. I probably made a bunch today. But um, we're too trusting getting out. Like yeah. a lot of these fat, like you'll hear veterans say, well, uh, we got this dinner at this rich guy's house. It's going to be great. It's like, no, he's bringing you there for free. He might buy you a steak. He wants to hear your story and you're never going to hear from him again. Yeah. 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 That's how did, it is. I, I was just wondering, exactly. since I asked that though, did, did you know those guys, just the connection with you and Chris, did you know Glenn Doherty or Ty Woods? Or? I, I didn't know. I, I, uh, um, I know their roommates. I didn't, they, they were West coast guys. I was East coast. Yeah. I, Cause that's you just didn't never met. Them. Well, it, it's the same. I mean, people I, I've been at battalions was the same guy. Like, like, unless I went to range school, if he's a different company, unless I went to range school with him or Raspers, I yeah, or we did or not. So it, it is, it's you meet guys and it is a small community, but then honestly, then the guys you think you should know, you've never you've never met before. You just know of them and 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 that's generally how it is. Did, I have did you a, serve with I the... have a great I have a great story about another veteran. I, I'm actually looking at it right now. Um <laughs> so American Sniper. <clears throat> The book came out like right after the Bin Laden raid. Yes, yeah. that was like and the, that's, the first and people, big one. Yeah, man, people were really interested in, in Navy SEALs. I'm sitting at home in Virginia Beach, and Chris Kyle sent me a signed book, right? And my initial arrogant reaction was, why would I want a signed book from another SEAL? And I opened it, and it says, great shot, Chris Kyle. I'm like, this is the coolest thing I own now. Oh, that, that's that cool. is cool. Yeah, I, I have a funny story with your book, which I've said on the podcast before, and I don't know if you remember this. Great friend of Chris and I, Drew Dwyer, who passed away, was in studio with me the day that I got to meet in studio, and he had a he had a stack full of books he wanted you to sign, and Drew Dwyer did a lot of stuff, man. He was a Marine contractor, and he got totally starstruck meeting you, man. His hands are shaking. And he really? Was like, yeah, could you sign these for me? And <laughs> right, unfortunately, we lost him a couple awesome. years ago, but he... He was very starstruck. I could well, tell. that's cool. That's very cool that he would he would say that. I don't I don't I don't see it, but that's awesome. You know, going going on and you know moving on in your career now. You, you've been law and stuff, you know, and and your Navy career, and you're speaking, you know, talking about being a father. And we will get some seriousness going on a little yeah, bit. Sure. You, you know what what were you feeling, man? I mean, when when you found out that you were going to be a father. And we get a lot of veterans that are fathers that are just figuring out like myself and yourself that it's probably one of the greatest things ever. What, oh, it is. Yeah. What was I mean, that, I, man? Well, it's, I, I had, like I said, I had kids in the Navy, my first marriage. And then for this one, we were, Jess and I have been married for uh, together about 10 years. And we kind of did everything that we wanted to do as far as uh, sporting events, Kentucky Derby, Super Bowl, shit like that. Um, and then, you know, we want to have a, have a family. So uh, yeah, I mean, it was just exciting. And then, I was able to, uh, I was able to to be there for delivery and assist with it, and it was just a, a miracle, um, just to just to watch the whole process. And she was in labor for like nineteen hours, so it was pretty intense. And uh, it just it was incredible to watch. Um, and just that you know what, and something that sort of struck me too, not at the time because I'm thinking about my new daughter, but it's like, 
Okay, there is a difference between men and women. And anyone, if you watch The Miracle of Birth and you think a man can be a woman, you're just an asshole because that's an <laughs> insult to women everywhere. That's You can't do that. I'm sorry. You, you, you can't menstruate. You're just, I mean, you're just a crazy person. <laughs> that's all. Yeah, I, uh, I, don't, I don't get it either. I, I could never push. No, I'm like, women are still... No, we, we, argue we, with... we'd, we'd be extinct as a race if men had to give birth. <laughs> I have a hard enough time pushing out a shit that big see I, then i, I did know. too I, I that's why my face is so red <laughs> anything you can tell the fathers uh, and new fathers and 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 like you said you, you went through life you live life and now you're really yeah. being a father again the difference now because you do i i you had or kids early now you have kids late man give us some knowledge man give us some your philosophy on being a father or, and maybe waiting's better or not waiting's better or just dive in with both feet or, or both whatever yeah, I, you, know. you know i yeah I, I think it's more of a struggle when you're younger just probably just financially and it gets stressful like i had uh i had uh one of my kids when i was going through selection for for green team screen team still team six yep. and uh that you know that's you, you you're getting up to you got to be at work for i think it's the 4 30 um five mile run so it's stressful all night because you're not sleeping as a father but you know you got to enjoy every second and try to keep mama happy because she works her ass off um uh, it like, uh, you know, and encourage breastfeeding and then encourage pumping because you want to give your wife a break. Um, uh, just cause the thing, well, I wasn't complaining at first cause we're both not sleeping, but only she can feed the baby. So I'm like, I'll just be over here crash for three hours. You're good. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just help as much as you can try to raise as a team. And then, uh, I'm really leaning towards homeschooling. I've been lucky with, um, with my kids who are pretty much grown but there was a time for all of them in high school where the hair turned purple and you can't talk about certain things without getting the silent treatment. Now they've reached the age of reason. So that's good. Um, but I think just a lot, I think that a lot of crap that's being taught in schools isn't worth it. I think you can, I think, I honestly think that if you start teaching your kids at a little bit of an older age, they're going to get it down because it's frustrating. Like preschool age, they are not really going to learn much, but playing or whatever and, and then you're you know you're leaving your kids with strangers that don't really have your kids yeah. best interest in mind yeah um you just take care of your kids teach them real history and then uh well obviously my three-week-old doesn't she i'm convinced she doesn't fucking listen but um she, uh i'm just going to try to teach her what i think is important too but be open-minded about other things too i just i think i'm right most of the time but <laughs> in this crazy As we world, all do yeah <laughs> there's probably a, a, a more padded way to talk about certain things like i mentioned the childbirth thing and if you know if the wrong crowd hears what i just said they they would hate me I, yeah. well i had i had a i got a brewery in norfolk virginia armed forces brewing company it's mm -hmm. awesome huge place we got a dining room a stage we got a uh, um apparel store there but as we're we're trying back in december um uh, we had a lot of protesters at our planning board or a city council meeting because i tweeted that everyone's welcome but i will not work with pedophiles seems pretty cut and dry to me all up in arms. It's like, what uh, is that what we're at in life? We're defending yeah. kitty diddlers. So, uh, but I mean, like somebody say the wrong thing. It's like, this, this is so obvious to me. Like the, like, but you can't argue with someone who thinks the, uh, the grass is blue. You just can't, you let them have it and don't waste your time trying to convince them that it's not. Yeah. I, I, I you know what I was going to ask point, you with yeah. the brewery? Cause you, I, I don't think I'm saying anything that you haven't mentioned, but you, cause you spoke about it on your podcast at the time. There's obviously like the weird thing with what happened and having a brewery, like are you obviously owning a brewery? Great thing. But are you done drinking at this stage in your life? Is that? Yeah, I, I am. I mean, you know, never say never. And it, you know, cause I love to golf and a beer after golf is great, but right now Dude. I can't touch it. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's takes discipline. It does. It's, it's hard to, it's hard. To it cut, is. You know? I'm it, especially flying so much. It's like, well, I mean, the bar is right there. We're not boarding for an hour and it's free uh -huh. drinks on the flight. And, and you're right on the speaking. I mean, I remember one speaking event where I just made a joke like, "Hey, this dude's drinking bourbon. I, hey, I'll take a shot every every hour. Put a shot." And I swear, and, and I didn't speak for nine hours. But at the end of the night, I had nine bourbon shots on the stage. Like, well, okay, oh what, do I, what, what do I do? Do I drink them all? Um, uh, and, and yeah, die? that's well, that's a tough I, one too because I know. The, the, the special <laughs> operator and he comes out. I can handle this, and I sometimes sometimes you can. Sometimes you, your language gets a little saltier, but you know what are you gonna I, do? I mean, I, I could tell you, and Chris knows this, like, I don't drink at all. And I, I never had a drinking problem. I The last time I had a drink, just for the hell of it, was probably like a year ago. And every time I do, 
I just get kind of depressed the next day, even off of you one do. drink. It's, it's, it's a depressant too. It's a depressant. And, exactly. and, and so I realized for me, it just doesn't enrich my life in any way. It no. doesn't enhance my life in any way. And <laughs> and there's other guys. And I think it's just, especially for you guys in the military, it becomes tradition, but tradition is not always a good thing. And and I know a guy that you, I think follow and, and know is Brent Gleason, who we'll hopefully have on the podcast at some yeah. point. Yeah. And I don't believe he has a drinking problem or anything like that, but he put up a video on it. He's been doing <laughs> videos on Instagram saying like, yeah, I've given up drinking and here's how my life is enhanced. I'm a better father. I'm more attentive. And yep. I don't think anything negative could come from saying, all right, I had a great time at this chapter in my life, but I'm moving yeah. on. And this isn't for me anymore. I have never woken up a day after drinking and said, man, if I only would have had two more drinks, it would have been a better night. <laughs> exactly. You know, and it's, and it's like, and the, the one it's I heard true. recently, it's not, it's not mine, but I am going to steal it. Uh, <clears throat> someone said something, something along the lines of drinking today is stealing joy from tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to steal. I'm stealing that too. I'm stealing that from whoever you Take stole it. it from, from you. I got you. Say that, yeah. <laughs> you can you. say you. you got it from me. <laughs> I got I you. I'll, say I'll that Rob O'Neill sure is creative. I'll give you props. But every time <laughs> I damn, every time I defend you on something, I get banned from it for like two weeks. So I got to stop. Uh, defend. <laughs> it's yeah. That's cyberspace. Oh, and those pictures are at, at Langley in a, um, I don't know why I just jumped to that in a, in a file <laughs> cabinet and a file cabinet. You believe that? It's shot. It's crazy. Shot. Shot. Yeah, I had some congressmen tell me that they've seen them and they're oh, in a wow. file cabinet. They're just there's like, oh, yeah, we're good. Let's just put it in a manila folder. We'll just throw them in. It was <laughs> typical. Yeah. I, I also wanted to make sure I ask you about you know what's going on <clears throat> with the podcast because I do yeah, yeah. follow the podcast <clears throat> and I see that <clears throat> you, you you have some stuff uh, that you're like working on that seems like that gets into uh, like more critical views of of the whole military industrial complex thing and, yeah. and from your perspective. So it seems like you're working on some like, honestly, pretty deep stuff as much as yeah. we have fun on here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, just the thing with the military industrial complex is just because the war ended doesn't mean the contracts expired. And there's a lot of grease in the skids for these yeah. huge con. And again, like when we called in uh, like a Hellfire missile in combat, man, I love those engineers and they're fucking fabulous. Um, just the whole thing, like, you know, you got to go somewhere else because we get, we got to keep pumping out the tanks and the missiles and the, and everything because the contract says we have to. So, and that's part of the reason that you leave everything in Afghanistan, you leave everything in Vietnam and you're pushing shit over the side of a ship because, well, we'll just make more. We need to make more and more and more because we got to keep doing it. And, uh, you know, I mean, if you, uh, Harry Truman, uh, President Truman, no, was it Truman? No, it was Eisenhower. Sorry. Um, Eisenhower's speech about beware the military industrial complex and it's real and it's a deep state thing. And, and I know yeah. you say deep state, you get flagged. It's real. And it's not the elected officials. Either. It's the unelected uh, three letter agency yeah. people. It's the a lot of the yeah. bankers and it's, yeah. and it's, you know, there's bad shit going on. And it's, I, I mean, you know, we, we need our military to be able to kick everyone's ass because a, 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 a secure America with deterrence and alliance solidarity makes the world a safer place for everybody. And we're seeing that right now. I mean, you know, Putin rose into Ukraine. I mean, three of the last four presidents had Putin invade someone. Just Donald Trump didn't because he knew he wouldn't fuck around. Uh, China's not doing anything to Taiwan. That's coming. Um, Israel, look at, I mean, look at the the Houthis. Are you shitting me? I, that's, I, the Houthis, just how, we used to beat, we, well, I went to Yemen after Libya. We were beating them by training some some militias that were fighting and they were beating the Houthis. And now we got Houthis hitting our warships and we're not doing it. It's like the Crips. It's like the Crips attacking our battleships. It is. It it's is. Like, are, how, what, how are they hitting? Yeah. Hit on that. I want you, I was going to ask you about the Houthis, and, but keep going. Cause I, I, well, I, the, I'm the, you don't, you don't stop the Houthis by necessarily bombing their sites where they're hitting you from. Uh, because I mean, a lot of them, a lot of those dudes are so hardcore. Like obviously yeah. you get martyred, you go to paradise and that's allegedly a really great place to be. But what you do is you put the fear into Iran and Iran's the one supporting everybody. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look at their support for Hamas and one's one Shia, one Sunni and they don't give a shit because the enemy, my enemy is my friend type shit, but they're the ones doing everything. And all, I mean, when, um, when the Trump administration killed Qasem Soleimani, uh, and Iran started rattling their swords saying, well, you're going to pay for this. And Trump said, no, I'm not. I'm going to blow up all your ports and I'll take out your oil, your, uh, your oil platforms or you cannot. And they didn't do shit. They just ran their mouths. But now they do stuff through their, I hate the word proxy, but that's what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, so I, Iran's a, a huge problem. Obviously they, they work a lot with China. Um, yeah. I mean, they're, they're an issue. So, so uh, like the, the, Houth the Houthis, it's 
we, I mean, if we, if, if we unleash the full power of the U S military on, we, we crushed that country in a day though. I mean, the last time we used our full power was I think 2003 when we just invaded Iraq, which again is another story, but uh, th that's an ass whooping and that's what America can do. Yeah. Um, I, I do agree that Iran has been a problem for a very long time, obviously, but at the same point, it's like, what do you do? Because I, I don't, I don't think anyone wants to see the U.S. involved in yet another no, war, no. and especially not Russia, <clears throat> Ukraine, China. We're no. we're involved in Israel, and now we're going to have something else. Like, how do what you they, handle this? I think you keep calling their bluff. Uh, sorry, go. Ahead. I just pulled it. Go ahead. Ahead. No, go, I go think ahead, uh, the, well, no with the Iranian people. Uh, this the people you need an uprising and a coup. It's not because the Iranian people are not bad people. It's the mullahs, uh, the, the mullahs, the clerics, the the, the religious. Leaders, yeah. the the Ayatollahs, the, the uh, they, they're uh, they're a problem. But the issue, it seems like every time an uprising starts, which it started a few times, uh, we get a complete media blackout, and it's because a lot of people, a lot of leftists, don't want um, a stable Iran because they want chaos. Again, I don't understand it. This the grass is blue, but that's a way to do it with a coup with some insider stuff. But now, I mean, it's tough to get in Iran now. Uh, I say Iran. On purpose, by the way, uh, during the World Cup, uh, one of the players said, "I run." And Iranian reporters like, "It's Iran, I Iran, I Iran, or whatever." It's like, no, it's Iran. I mean, <laughs> it's forever. Right. Well, it's also it's the uh, Arabian Gulf, not the Persian <laughs> Gulf. <laughs> whatever they want to say. I don't even watch soccer anymore. Actually, I never did. So I'll say Iran. So I say Iran. Yeah, or... I say Iran all the time now, just because uh, it's. Wrong. I still say uh, Iran because I, you know, it is like I, my trip. And actually, the funny thing with <clears> Rob when I interviewed him, like Rob is one of the few guys. But I could tell, like, looked into my background before actually sitting down for an inter interview. I remember you were like, I know that you went to Hofstra University. And I was like, wow, all right, you actually did some research. But I think from my years of, like, radio training, you know, it's Iran, not Iran. Yeah, it's this. Probably, so, yeah. so I, I tried it's to. It's Iran. It's Flock of Seagulls, man. It's, it's Iran. Iran, baby. It's Iran. It's Iran. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 it, it, but he, you had it on the head. All you got to do is just, like Trump did, attack all their proxies when they threaten mm -hmm. us. <laughs> yeah, whatever. And keep attacking their proxies. And that's how you're going to, and you're calling their bluffs and you're calling their bluffs. And yeah. then you're then put on all the, all the unconventional warfare, all the media that you need to, 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 to pressure them. And, you know, not giving them money does help as well. I don't know what that is about piles of cash, billions of dollars in cash yeah. for Iran. It goes right, it goes right to Hezbollah. Yeah. yeah. It goes right to terrorist <laughs> organizations, right to the missiles and all that stuff too. And, and uh, I mean, not, if you think they don't notice, they being China, Russia, North Korea, Iran, um, <laughs> if, you think, if you think they don't notice that Joe Biden is completely mentally out of it, but it's not just that. They're also watching our inept media cover for him. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's a, and they are not taking us serious at all. They, we don't yeah. have a well, we don't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out. When you, when you got the Houthis hitting our battleships, of course they're not taking us serious. I mean, it's, it's that's an embarrassment. People don't realize how big of an embarrassment that is. If you've worked in Yemen, if you've fought against the Houthis, done anything in Yemen, you would understand what I'm talking about. Literally, and when I compare the Houthis to the Crips, the Crips would be giving them a better fight than what yeah, we are. Right I'd now. actually rather fight on the side of the Crips than with the Houthis. I, than with, the, with the Houthis. Actually, it, I'm almost I, there. I'm ready. <laughs> Let's get a ship and go over there. Dude, and you, you are. And you would. You're a little. You're going to need to get a tan, brother. Or is that racist? To, can, well, can, no. Can he be a white? Can he be a white? Crip? I, I wear. Uh, I wear hats and long sleeves and gloves. When okay. I was, I was over there in the summertime. I Miserable in the summertime. Iraq gets really warm. You yeah, know, just, I, just but I will be <laughs> on the first to say the reason I the reason I brought up the fact that I don't want to see us, you know, I, I understand I the conflict with Iran, but I don't want to see us in another war. I always make an appointment as like the civilian of the three of us. There's nothing I hate more, man, than watching whether it's on Fox News or any of that. And you see less of it now. But like the civilian who's never done any of this banging on the desk being like, yeah, this president's not tough enough. We need to start sending troops over there. And then guys come back losing limbs or with body bags. And you go, was this really worth it? And it's the same way a lot of people feel, feel with Afghanistan. And a lot of that, whether it was Afghanistan or, or Iraq, happened because of propaganda from members of oh, the yeah. U.S. media, oftentimes, honestly, right-wing members of the U.S. media who think it's <clears> tough <throat> to sit in an air-conditioned studio, bang on a desk and say, we're not doing enough. And as a civilian, I never want to be that guy. No, it's I mean, you see it on Capitol Hill and they call them war hawks. You're not war hawks, you're a fucking yeah. asshole. I mean, look at uh, <clears throat> part of the reason that, that um, Afghanistan faltered is because we concentrated on Iraq. 
And why did we invade Iraq? Well, because the president at the time, George W. Bush, was upset that one time his dad, yeah. George H. W. Bush, he was threatened with assassination from Saddam Hussein. Absolutely. So we, we, we are going to yep. invade. And that's yeah. just how that's how it went down. And you got to keep in mind, after 9-11, man, I'll invade any country. Um, and I wanted to go to Iraq because, like, I want to get in a fight. But now you look back, like you're saying, the people that lost their limbs, uh, the friends that were killed. Um, and, I mean, even think about how, how like – if you kill a dude, even if he's a terrorist in front of his kids, there's more terrorists right, right there in about 10 right years there. and Absolutely. they're never going to forget you. And that's, yeah. I mean, I couldn't 20 years ago, I could have never heard myself saying this, but older and either dumber or wiser. It's just, I, I don't, I, the beltway DC is a cesspool and it it's not going to stop. I've, never, I've interviewed never. Dan, Dan Hampton, who was a fighter pilot and the way he put it, and it's the way I always remember it, is that the U.S. is very good at terrorist whack-a-mole. Like, we kill bad guys, and they pop up again and again. And yeah. the only way you're going to take this out is to somehow make this ideology not cool. Because right now, that is what they see as how to advance, is that they're going to become terrorists. It, like, the idea of even... wiping out all of Hamas, that is never going to happen. It's unrealistic. And is that possible? I, I don't think it's possible why, changing the ideology. I don't know. I, oh, I, no. that, would, that would be wonderful, but... How the hell do you do that? It, I think we, we've already tried. It doesn't it, Afghanistan 20 years or whatever. You're not going to change <laughs> no, an ideology. No, no. No. But I don't know. What do you think, man? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it starts with better. As you know, trying to keep it simple, it starts with better parenting and maybe leaving each other alone. Um, maybe I don't you know, I don't have the answers. There's smarter people than me making decisions, but. We've tried these wars for a long, long time. And we always seem to be at some sort of a war or a threat of war. Yeah. And personally, as someone who fought in wars, I don't like it. It's not cool. Yeah. Um, it might be at the time, but once you get a little bit away from it, it took me about seven years to really start yeah. feeling it. Um, it's And again, it's not you d don't think that these politicians' kids are fighting. It's most yeah. of them. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and I heard you speak about on the podcast how you said that your baseline normal for years and years of your life was going out and killing bad guys every single night, you know, and then yeah. going out and drinking after it. And yep. that should not be baseline normal for anyone. I don't think there's any way to live your life like that for years and to come back in a civilian life and to be completely normal and to be unaffected by all of that. Well, it's it's it seemed normal at the time because everyone was doing it. And, you know, when I was when I was in Virginia and fighting, I basically knew Navy SEALs, their families and bartenders. So I didn't know any better. Um, not again. That sounds like an excuse, but that's just the culture. And then you, yep. you get away from it. It's like, damn. I, um, they asked a lot of us. Well, it, 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 when you're doing it though, it, it, it I, and I've told people this. Why did you? They've asked me, "What did you?" Do? Well, it was fun. I was having a good time. It was. I, I can, and, and you can hate me for it. I don't give up two fucks. I, I went and had fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every job I did. I enjoyed every person. Well, not every person I was with, but I enjoyed being within the groups and I enjoyed, I, I did. And you got to see some of the, where did you get to see a fucking building at night that has just disco holes all over it. And then you drive down and there's another, just another shot. And then there's a burning car, right? That just tired. I mean, that's, that's cool. That is. But then when you cut, you do, you come back and I'm the same way. I like 20 years later. Damn, yeah. yeah. That, I mean, it was cool, but I, I don't want to see. It was cool. I, it was cool at the time. Yeah. But I don't want it. I we don't want. I don't want that here. I don't want. I and that's. I no. guess maybe that's why we we could always get away from it. We could always come back to. That's America. what it is. Too. That's exactly right. Yeah, we could get could get away <clears> from it. And that's the scary part now. Is I don't think. I mean, you let that many million people yeah. in. Don't don't think Hezbollah, and Hamas, and Al Qaeda, and ISIS aren't in those, those crews coming across. They're working in cahoots with uh, yeah. with the cartels that basically run the entire border now because we just can't figure out how to do it. Um, and that's the, the shitty thing too is when the attack happens, which is going to, um, I don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be infrastructure probably this time. It's not going to be planes flying into buildings, but as soon as a major attack happens, you're going to see those goddamn politicians on the steps of the Capitol saying, God bless America. And it's like, some of us have been screaming from the rooftop for a yeah. while about this and you fuckers won't make the decision. And then they can spin it into how they need to get reelected to never let this never, remember, remember when we used to say, never forget, never forget. Yep. I, uh, that's the only and problem that, is the only problem is we keep forgetting to forget, never forget. forget. Always. Oh, and us 50 year olds are going to have to come out of fucking retirement. Dude, I got to repair it. Yeah, my body can't take I, it. I can't do it again. <laughs> my knees fucked up. I got to get surgery on my hips. Like, but you know, it's, it's, I, I'm serious. It's like, I'm going to be like, fuck. Uh, 
Gosh, but damn you know, it. we're gonna we're gonna Here want we go. to. We can I can still I can still make it up and down. I might not I can't wear body armor, maybe just because it's uh you know the lower back, baby, but I can maybe run. <laughs> well, we got the 20 year olds. You guys run. Remember, remember when you yeah, you go fast. I'll I'll catch up. I'll get yes. there. Just just keep going. You guys, because well, those two I, I, Oh, ahead, I had my, uh, I would have been in still. I wanted to stay in the Navy for 30 years. Uh, um, but um, I had my, I was going to retire as a master chief instructor. And my line was going to be, all right, gents, today we are going to run 10 miles. And of course, by we, I mean you. <laughs> so I already had it ready, man. <laughs> do, do you, uh, do you hate the fact that you had to like retire early after what happened? No, and, it was, you know... no, it was time because, uh, we did the Bin Laden raid in, in May of 2011, and then in August, we lost Extortion 1-7, and, and yeah. we lost so many guys that we went from, like, the highest part of morale and planning missions into, you know, low morale and planning funerals, and it just – that was a lot. And, uh, and that's just proof that, you know, one lucky shot, and it's over, yeah. and you never get to see your kids again. And I was like, you know, I want to see my kids get married one day, and I, it's time. It's just time. I, I did one more deployment after just to – I wanted to say, you know, I came in through the front door. I'm leaving through the front door. Yeah. And – um that sort of works, but not really because nobody cares. The, the machine just keeps rolling. I, it does, yeah, it, yeah, it's it's, it's a train, man, and it'll yeah. keep moving without you. Yeah, yeah. I I got one last. Well, what we talked about Afghanistan a bit, and you know, I I just give me with our pull out there, and it was a fiasco. Tell me what was going through your head. I I spent a lot of years all over that place, just like you did, and and I did mm -hmm. meet a lot of friends. I and actually we did get two Terps here in my hometown. They're all they're, my sons oh, play cool. soccer soccer Good. with their little god. Them little fuckers can play soccer. Sons of yes, <laughs> they <laughs> but, can play soccer and they can run up a mountain. They can run up It's mountain. amazing. But you know, it did it did it did affect me more than I think I let on after a while because it pissed me. It was like, geez, we just left these these dudes. I know. And that's dangerous too. And we left all the biometrics back there too, where they can track yes. these people down. We, uh, I, and, my the, and, and this is a shameless sponsor, but we have a great night vision sponsor oh, and, Photonis, Photonis, yeah. and we left all the night, night vision over there. That's, well, let's that's make scary. more. Talk, hey, I'll, and, I'll take a sponsorship from the night vision guys. I'll, can, I'll, 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 I'll talk to, I'll, I'll hit them up to actually. I'll, I'll talk uh, to yeah. <laughs> that's I'll great. We, uh, my first time over there, like I was saying, I thought every corner was going to be a suicide bomber. I thought every, but, but, and yeah. I ended up actually, we had a Terp. I couldn't pronounce his name. So we called him Larry. And uh, we lived in a, we had a safe house that we built in, it's in downtown Jalalabad. We took over yep. a small hotel. We lived in Jabad. Okay. And uh, we, we would actually play Halo. He actually got really good because he didn't come, he was home. And uh, over, you know, he was a good Muslim, but he'd have cocktails over there too. Because he was a know, Jack I, Jack Muslim, dude. We got Jack yeah, Muslims yeah. all over. Yeah, I mean, like I got I got agency and then Green Berets all in this chocolate alley. That's is, where, that's where our house yeah. was right. Our house was right there until yeah. like I think in two thousand eight. They we, we, did everybody have to move on the new base? Something. Yeah, well, we moved right around moved right around 08, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. we were we were up like we would sit on the rooftop and have like you can look over Jalalabad, you can uh, see the globe in the middle of the roundabout and like there's monkeys. So we're up there having Heinekens cuz you can get that pretty cheap. And he said something about uh like we had a woman we could see and I said, "Oh, check that girl. I man, she's tight." And he he said, "Yes, Mr. Rob, she is tight like goat." And I said, "No. <laughs> no." <laughs> and then I said, I said, "Larry, look, man, since you brought it up, I gotta ask, do you fuck all your animals? And he goes, No, not the males. That would be disgusting. Like, <laughs> oh, that's what, that Damn. makes it that makes it all the better. Okay, that, and there's stories too in Afghanistan where like people will think I'm not telling the truth. Like it's a it's a different world, man. You're not you're not gonna force Jeffersonian democracy in that place. All they want is their valleys, man. Yeah, that's and and the story he's selling is right. So for all you that don't believe, is it yes, that that actually I can honestly say that has happened. More than to just rob, not the goat fucking yes. part, but the talking yeah. about. And yeah, there we go. Talking I, about I and, there's, and there's other bad shit that goes on there too, especially Thursday <laughs> night. They have Baku Bazi or whatever they call it. That's fucking. Yeah. Crazy. I, I was going to tell. I mean, yeah. I have a friend yeah. who's an army veteran who's actually just telling you about before we uh, hit the record button, uh, Apache mechanic. But he he always told me, you know, regardless of how religious they say they are, he's like, I never saw as much like gay activity going on. You know? Well, their excuse is it's it's not gay if you don't love him. If you don't sleep with him, it's not gay. Which, hey, that's your that's your rationale. I'm not gonna. I, that, as, you do you. I, if you're not doing it to me, we're we'll be fine. And as long as you're interpreting what I need correctly, and that's you it. Got yeah, your, you're, you got your AK with me. I don't give. It's like everything. It. I, it's like everything. I don't give a shit what you, you got my back. I got yours. You telling me what it. he's saying? Are you telling me correctly? Is that exactly what he said? Yes. All right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
I, I mean, that was that was a place too. Like, but talking about how people don't understand the culture, I I, I remember seeing like uh, dudes wouldn't know how to count to five, but they <laughs> knew the five names of their brothers. It's like they don't know what time is in some of those places. It's, it's crazy. Just the, the bra- their brain. It, well, it's just like you said, they could run up a mountain, but oh, yeah. you tell them you could you tell them to do ten jumping jacks and they'd be winded. Yeah. It's like couldn't figure but, it out. I was like, what was it? But it, it was a it, it was an amazing place. And we did. Oh, yeah. Fuck, I mean, and, and, we and some of the some of the people I met in Afghanistan were awesome, very welcoming. They they even have uh posture <laughs> Wali where if even if you're fighting them, you ask for help, they'll give it to you. So it's yeah. not, I mean, it's it's weird to us, but it's their culture, and you do you. Yeah, that's how it was. Yeah. And I do um, feel I, I mean, one la- Oh, wait, did, did you have did. something else, Chris? Or? Saying, no, 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 no. Rob just horrible about what we we did to our allies and then watching the taliban come take him god i mean god knows what they're doing to him now yeah it, it, well politicians uh, i that still disgust the shit out of me with, yeah. with all that man um i got one last thing and then sure. um avn's got anything for you but military sons daughters and i always ask people especially those that have served like you and served fantastically like you did would you recommend military service and today, 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 this time, if somebody said, do you want, I want to go in the military, what would you say? To I would say start getting straight A's right now, get accepted to a service academy and learn to fly something, there you, um, go. I, yeah. you know, partial to the Naval Academy just because the, the jets are cool. But I mean, army pilots are the best uh, helicopter pilots in the world and air force is cool. So I would do that because like, <laughs> you know, seeing, seeing a bunch of special operators in the mud at night, is way different for real than on a recruiting poster. And most of the shit that looks cool is like the worst environment imaginable. So fly something for sure. That's, that's my advice. Dude, sleeping in a bombed out building with a furry fucking blanket that you're going to, it's like, it's either I freeze or I catch some disease on my oh, arm. Yeah. And I'm going to itch for the next week mm-hmm. while I'm here taking these corticosteroids to get it. A, it's a choice. I'm like, man, I wish I, I how many times, I, how many times were you sitting there going, man, I, I really wish I was a pilot right now. Man, I know, I'm man. Right now. I, we, we got a gunfight on the border. And um, it took us an hour to get any air support. So we're getting surrounded and uh, a pilot showed up and I, I have nothing but respect for pilots. He's, he was an air force guy. And uh, he, in order to calm everyone down, he said, uh, just talk to me like I'm a man as we're trying to call air support. And I think my first response was, I see why women find you attractive. <laughs> so, but yeah, I was jealous of him. I'm, I was assuming he was just a damn fine looking guy flying that F-15. You know, they, they all are, except for James Stewart. He's the only one that looks like Chris Farley. You mean Jack Chris Stewart. Farley, Jack, Jack Stewart. Did I say James? I'm yeah, sorry. I get, I get Staley's I get Staley's name. I jack it, but never mind. Stewart, the pilot. It looks like Chris Farley. But he's still That's a good looking funny. guy. He just looks we like had a, he's just- we got a bar in Virginia Beach. It's called Hot Tuna. It's a restaurant bar. And um it, on Wednesday nights, back, at least when I lived there, that was the big night to go there. And I had uh, you know, there was pilots and seals and shit. And I heard this Navy pilot argue with one, one of my buddies who's a SEAL about who has the coolest job in the Navy. And my buddy said to him, We know damn well you don't have Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer up there flying, but we got plenty of Charlie Sheens. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's still the best 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 military. That's oh, wow. that's awesome. Wait, wait, is, is yeah. that a, is that Charlie Sheen right there? Yeah, man. Wait, still, uh... you got to Actually, I had another question, but what's the story behind that, man? What's the story of meeting Charlie Sheen? Was that like Tiger Blood era Charlie Sheen, or what was when Quit was this? Knocking all your shit off your. Day. <laughs> I know, I had to get this. That's down cool. He's time. showing us. That's a very sharp uh, tomahawk. So yeah, it says um, he sent this to me. It's from the movie. I actually have the original script too. It says, uh, to Rob, we finally did it. That's it. Yeah. And uh, he was the Lieutenant JG in the movie. Yep. And so I made a, uh, I did a social media post where I said Admiral Hawkins. <laughs> he'd have to be an Admiral by now, right? So wait, what, what era did you meet him? Was this like Tiger Blood going crazy era? Was this after that? When did you get to I meet him? I met him right towards the end of that. Um, okay. And I mean, he's awesome. He's, he, he, he quit everything. He doesn't. He was to smoke and he doesn't smoke anymore. He, I think he quit. Been, uh, he, did he quit banging porn stars since he has <laughs> HIV? See, I can't or... confirm that because he's not here. But um, <laughs> he was. He's an awesome dude, man. I love Charlie. He he's, seems like he'd be a ton. I mean, he's, he's, that seems he's, like a bucket awesome. list party. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, so he and I have had drinks together before, but then he he did quit. And it's been 
I don't know how many years, six years now. It hasn't touched a thing. But did you did you cut yourself? Did you cut tomahawk? yourself off the tomahawk? That's man? my tomahawk, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but you're you're wiping uh, your head. Did you cut yourself? Yeah. Well, I was. Holy that's shit, why I was. That's, that's so I was knocking shit down. I only had one hand. I was. Because when you said that's a sharp tomahawk, I didn't know that you actually cut. Hey, yourself. we got yeah. we got. Hey, there there's our thumbnail right there. Robin will cut, cuts himself <laughs> on Battleline Podcast. Well, you know what you Fucking can do too in. is be, because uh, that's the tomahawk that that like the intercept wants to prove we committed war crimes. Uh, like scalping people and it's like dude i didn't carry the tomahawk on target it's 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 heavy and it's a waste i don't need to it's just really cool to cut yourself on with it <laughs> while you're showing us the charlie but, sheen thing so but, yeah. the, the last question i actually wanted to ask you it's completely unrelated to all this stuff Good. is i know from your book from speaking with you and actually interviews you've done you are a big not only metal guy and rock guy yeah. you're a big hip-hop guy i know you're yeah. a guns and roses fan i know you're an yeah. onyx fan when you yeah. were in the yeah. hoodie onyx. Uh, wow. that that they reposted i remember that um so yeah what have you been listening to i also saw the interview with joe budden so yeah what what are you yeah, been listening was, well that's just awesome well because you know we i'm a i love um i love rock bands uh event sevenfold kid rock's a good yeah. friend of mine he's incredible live if you haven't seen his they awesome. But then I do dig hip hip hop because well, I got asked on TMZ, um, what song did you listen to on the way into I remember and you said the game. The game. I listened to Game of Little Wayne, their version of Red Nation. And I like that. The song's incredible. I like it though because we were Red Squadron. It's called Red Nation. And it says, I killed Satan, you know, throwing blood in the air, leave blood on the ground. That's just a cool ass song. And so uh, TMZ asked me that. And then the game found out about it and hit me up. And he said, that's pretty fucking cool. And so he's a, uh, and you know, he was one of the dudes that um, when that Frisco, Texas came out, he actually read the report that the New York, sorry, that a newspaper put out. <laughs> this is and, so uh, great. For the people watching, he really did cut himself. So, <laughs> and I did, I'm bleeding. Um, <laughs> But uh, um, the game came out and because it said some bad stuff. And they go, you realize that the guy accusing him is a white guy, right? Because there was something said allegedly that wasn't said. But I can't get, I don't want to get too much into it right now. But are, are you listening to anything uh, lately or is it just you kind of go back to what you were listening to at that time? <laughs> you have any recent stuff you're into or? Um, no, I kind of like the old stuff. The, um, yeah, I get that. Yeah, it's, uh, I like memory lane because I'm at the age now too. When I go to the gym, I don't listen to music. I listen to audio books. I just I'm trying to uh, stay up to date on. I whatever. like audio books, but I have to I have to listen to you know really heavy metal, whether it's Amur or Pantera when I'm working out. Like that's what I love. Mm. Or Onyx. Onyx is heavy, even though Onyx it's hip hop. I could put that on at any time. Yeah, yeah do you, back do you, the fuck up, man. Onyx, back the fuck that. up, and, and yeah, all all that stuff, and even their newer stuff, man, they're great. But um. Yeah, I was. Also well, I'd say. You, I mean, I'd say. You know, pound for pound, you're not going to get a bad song from Slip. Not even Slipknot, though. Yeah. Not, and we've got Corey Taylor on the podcast, which is pretty cool. Cor oh, cool. Cor yeah. They Cor get. They got rid of the uh, Jay uh, Weinberg. Yeah. 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 Jay that's Weinberg. Because that guy's incredible. Now he's playing like punk now or something. Yeah. And, people were people were kind of furious about that because it's like you know they they found a guy to replace Joey Jordson who was incredible that the fans really gravitated towards. And then it's like, why'd you get rid of this guy? And no one seems to know. You know, it's, it's I think it's like one of those things in the locker room for a pro team or the team room, um, just internal conflicts, probably. Yeah, Something that might, that may be it. And also the fact that you got these guys who grew up in like rural Iowa and Jay Weinberg is the son of the drummer from, uh, you know, the E Street band. So he being oh, okay, in that, that. Oh, yeah, being from that privileged background, Maybe it is hard to get along with those guys, but I mean, he did it for years, so I don't know who they're replacing him with, but I do know that the fans are just like, the fans really love that guy. Well, the fans, um, let me see if I can find this dude. I'm convinced is the greatest drummer on planet Earth. Is it Dave uh, Lombardo from Slayer? Because that's, to me, that's the greatest hmm. drummer on Earth. Um, shit. No, this guy's better. He's from like Peru or something. I don't think he could uh, be better than Dave Lombardo, man. This the, guy's the insane. Slayer no, no, drumming no, no, no. is just a, a, amazing. Always will be. Um, no, I'll find. <laughs> I, I'm gonna find him for. No, no, this guy. No, th this is the best drummer in the world. He he does shit that other drummers have watched his videos. Like this guy's doing shit that no one's ever even attempted. He's You'll have insane. to tell us who it is. But yeah, I was gonna ask too. Being in New York City, man, do you still go out to shows at all? Because we get we get everything. I just saw the newly kind of reformed Pantera. They were great. Just saw Static X. Static uh, X, yeah. Yeah, I mean, any. Oh, awesome. do you go to shows around here or not really? 
Um, no, I, I like Broadway. I don't like going down there right now, but you know, I, I, I want to see like the book of Mormon. I've never seen that. That's then, there, that is a great, you guys see, that is actually I, a great show. Is it, I've heard oh, it's, it's awesome. hilarious. Then, fucking hilarious. You know, I, I saw that was still on Broadway. I mean, it's been there for, yeah, a, oh, it's good. Easily over uh, a decade. The show, my favorite show, I saw a queen twice at Madison Square Garden uh, a couple years wow. ago. When so Adam with Adam Lambert, Lambert, right? Yes. And I'll tell you what, man, he is awesome. He, he, he's a, uh, he's a bit, and I got a chance to meet him when I worked at Sirius. Like, really nice guy, man. Yeah, he seems like he would be. He just, uh, his voice is incredible. And he yeah. was so cool. He said he was just humble. He's like, I'm a queen fan, like everyone out here. I'm, he goes, he's like, I'm a queen I'm, and I'm a queen fan. Yeah. And he, he said, Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm just a guy on stage wearing a really gay dress, <laughs> which I think is cool. Did, yeah. Did, he's, he's great, man. Did, did he, yeah. did he, did he rep, did he rep Freddie? Pretty good. Yes. I, I, I mean, I've, all, I've never seen him live. I've never seen Adam. I've, well, obviously, I never saw Queen live either. Was young, young. Yeah, he. Re- I think he was the best guy they could have found for sure. Oh, uh, that's because they are. They're they're iconic, man. They're incredible. Yeah. And fucking Freddie's one of the best frontmen in the history of frontmen. Dude, he's just a performer. He's a singer and a performer. I. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why I, I heard he heard he was fun to party with. I <laughs> yeah I yeah I heard that too. I I'll stay away from those parties though. I I don't know if I could. <laughs> Yeah, be, uh, not necessarily my... up my alley. But I heard <laughs> no, did you just say up? Can we should we not say up when we're talking? Yeah, we, I'm talking about <laughs> Afghanistan again. Okay, thank you. All right, there we go. Here's another. Fun. We're gonna get we're gonna get hammered again. Let's keep it up, man. Talk yeah, about this was stuff. a fun <laughs> one though, man. I I really appreciate it. And yeah, truth but... be told, before we had you on, I mean, I hit up Chris and I said you were coming on and. I wouldn't have been surprised if you came on and we're going to hammer us for because no. a lot of your fans were like, Hey, you're clickbaiting this story. And I would have said, Hey, give it to us, man. I, I wouldn't have a problem with that, but you also don't know have, doing a podcast that this not, is what people want to hear. It's not like you're lying about me. It's fine. No, I never would. Uh, I never would. No. And I'm just, I'm just saying, uh, it's fine. It's, that's, it's a, it's a story and talk about it. And well, and, yeah. and, and the, no, I appreciate you saying that too. But no, I mean, I, I, I don't hold grudges and I don't, I, I rarely get angry at people. So it's fine. Yeah. And, I, and I appreciate I, it, man. Because I, I think I even hit you up after we it happened. And, and if people watch the video itself, I mean, I don't walk any of it back. I say that I respect you, that I've met you and you're a great guy. And it, it's just, look, it's, it's an issue that happened. It's in the community. And we both said like, hopefully whatever it is that you have to do to work through this, we want to see you still be on top, yeah. and whether it's doing speaking yeah, engagements, well, I, writing I, more books, doing podcasts, we don't want that to, I just, to you know, not be at, at a high level that you're yeah, doing. Yeah, I mean, well, apparently all I need to do to correct myself is stop playing with Tomahawks. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, we do have to use that as a clickbait right there. We'll oh, use but that totally. One. Do, do that do, one. But, that's awesome. but, uh, but uh, yeah, with, with all that... To me, it was is like a teammate. It's like, man, I got a problem. Let's, oh, let's, perfect. What, what do we do in the team room? We fucking close the door and we fucking have it out. Yeah. And then, and then, but at the end of it, for those that didn't listen, it's like, if it was time to go in and kick a door and go through the gates of hell, I'm going to be right there with Rob and I would every time because yeah. you, you are, dude. You, you are. I love you, man. You, you set, you're, you're at the top. I mean, all of us are, we're, we're here too. We're, we're with you, but man, huh? you, you're just got to lead the way. You're the one that's 110 percent in this, and we, I, I got your back. There may be other guys that don't, but I do. And that well, being said, it. that being Thank said, you. though, yeah. And if I did something, and I want you to talk about on your podcast, if I'm out there in Afghanistan, well, I'm, gonna have, I'm, where gonna I'm grabbing you, goats' I gotta asses. On my I, podcast, I got to get you on. Oh, dude, I'd be honored. I, cool. Yeah, and, and we, we'll set it up for sure. We, and we can talk about goat fucking and all that other. That you know, <laughs> it's going to be goat fucking and shitting. That's it. <laughs> goat fucking and shit. <laughs> well, but it's, it's people an look honor. forward to that. And it, yeah, you look you look great. You look like you, dude. You look like you got your shit together, man. Outstanding. Thank really thank appreciate. Yes, I really appreciate you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much, Rob. And for the audience, yeah. I should say, as you said, follow Rob at Mikuya on on X on Instagram, which is still just a great username. And check out the Operator podcast on all podcast platforms. You do a great show, and uh, yeah, man, it's it's great to have you on. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, we'll we'll do it again too. I'll give you that info on the greatest drum in the world. I'm going to find it probably tonight and send it to you. Yeah, and I'm still in New York for now, man. So I'm gonna, anytime, as soon as to hang with you, as soon so. as I find my band aids, I will find the drummer. <laughs> I'm gonna get on X just so I can defend you some more and get keep getting getting oh, blocked. Oh man, from yeah, X. I don't really get back now, man. Elon hop, doesn't really ban people. Elon's if you want to hop in there and defend me, that's great. I, I don't read the comments because they're just fucking mean, very creatively mean though. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, man, it's but it was fun. Those were the fun days back in the Twitter days when. 
a jump on and had somebody said, I, what did what'd they say? Oh, they, they didn't know who you that were. You killed Bin Laden. And then yeah. you killed, or they, like, oh, this mother, I was like, you know, you're just talking shit to the dude that actually shot Bin Laden. That's you are awesome. a dumb motherfucker. <laughs> and I got banned for like three weeks, but it's it, not, yeah, it's not like that anymore because of Elon. <laughs> um, although it's so far, I, I don't even know if Chris knows this. So Chris works for this guy, in. Jeremy, and Jeremy called me and he, he said this in a serious way. He's like, you know, I'm trying to see if Chris wants to have like a presence on X or Twitter again. And he's like, how would you feel about getting Elon Musk on the podcast? I'm like, dude, what? he's the richest man in the world. Like, it would be great, but I don't think it's going to happen. And Jeremy's gonna... like, I'm going to try to make it happen. I mean, if he does, I would love to eat my words. But uh, Rob yeah. O'Neill is a huge guest. I don't think we're getting Elon on here. We've gotten Corey Taylor. <laughs> we've gotten some cool people. But I don't, I don't know what Elon would get out of coming on here. But if you could do it, that'd be cool. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, uh, have a good night, bro. We, we've kept right, you guys. long enough. Thanks for going. Yeah, thanks so thanks much, man. Thanks, gentlemen. Us, man. We'll do it again soon. <laughs> That's all for this episode of Battleline Podcast. But we're always posting new content on social media. Follow us on Instagram at Battleline Podcast and on Twitter at Battleline Pod. That's an order. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes up every Tuesday. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or your podcast platform of choice. Believe in yourself. Face all challenges head on. And as always, never quit.